Well, we may as well just start from the bottom of that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a Who Bulletin. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. We are not um, streaming on a Tuesday. What's going on? We are streaming on a Sunday because they are, they've decided, the powers that be at the BBC have decided to announce some stuff today. That stuff being, of course, um, new Doctor Who titles. Oh, they're not doing every half an hour, are they? Fucking hell. You're kidding. Oh, God, they are as well. <laughs> oh, God, I hope you're in for a long stream. So... Oh god, don't do it every half hour. Fuck me, that's that's just a nightmare. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, everyone. Um, we're going to be streaming today, as long as it takes, hopefully, for them to announce all the new titles. Um, if you're not aware and you're new here, well, first of all, we'll say hello to everyone. Welcome to Hoovy and Life, Dr. Master, Nicole, Nicola, sorry, Nicola Pendragon, um, DWFA16, Luke Orion, Mr. Scarlow, JSP, Liam Hickey, Under Hedge, uh, Underhenge, sorry, Subversal Who Plus, Stefan, Liam Hickey, uh, welcome all to the stream. Um, I'm going to be on air for as long as I fancy being on air for. I don't know how long that's going to be, but we will do that because we're going to be live reacting to all of the brand new episode titles. They're releasing a little four second animated teaser for every single episode with the writer and director announced as well. Massive massive um bit of news actually and a, a great way of promoting it so we got our first one which is why i'm live now um let's have a look at that first one shall we who is messaging me i missed it i can't believe it i was like planning on doing it and i missed it completely um it's also just my setup looks quite nice during the day doesn't it so this is our first one we've got space babies um I realise my headphones aren't actually plugged in. That's a good one, John. So we've got Crying Babies and a uh, Monster. What do we know about this episode so far? So it's written by Russell T. Davis, directed by Julianne Robinson. We've got a spaceship, presumably with a baby on it, or babies on it. It's some sort of space nursery, maybe. The monster is going to be called the Bogeyman. We know that. And that's what we see in the background here. That is from the trailer. Let's have the trailer up as well, like the old trailer, so we can... Um, Kind of pull that up. Um, Doctor Who Disney Plus trailer. Uh, this one. So we do actually have... Um, let's not play it all the way through, George. So this is the bull. This is from Space Babies, as we were talking about last week. If you missed our um, stream last week, we actually did do a breakdown of this trailer. I'll be uploading an edited version of that breakdown to YouTube in maybe later today, tomorrow, I'm not sure, but it's pretty much almost there and ready to go. Um, but we did do that last week, so if you missed that, that's something to look forward to as a video format, I suppose. Um, as you can see here, this is from Space Babies. We talked about this last week, episode one. It's got the same outfits from the Church of Ruby Road or the end of Church of Ruby Road. And we've got this monster coming down the hallway. And this monster, it was very briefly shown here, um, is actually called the Bogeyman. It first appeared and announced, um, in terms of name anyway, in the Russell T. Davis documentary that went live on BBC One last year. Um, the monster is called the Bogeyman. They showed it off, albeit a little bit blurred. Um, but this is the Bogeyman. As you can see, uh, a big, sort of grim, horrible creature. It seems to match the design here on the Space Babies promo. So that's what we know about episode one. Um, we do know also that we're going to be going to, I believe, the Jurassic period in episode one. Because we just have to look at the outfits to say all of that. Same outfits as Space Babies, the rest of the stuff. Um, you've got Ruby's outfit from the Church on Ruby Road. Shooty's outfit from the end of Church on Ruby Road as well. Um, that all lines up. So presumably the story's going to take place is, where do you want to go? Anywhere in time and space. She says dinosaurs. They go to the dinosaur era. And then maybe they get taken to some other place. Maybe this is the space station from Space Babies. Maybe that's what we're looking at, or maybe we're looking at a different ship, but that looks to be somewhat correct. There's a sort of warning sign that says Reset Port B in the corner there as well. Um, but Space Babies is the name of the episode. It's a beautiful little graphic. Very, very excited about that. Um, yeah, very cool. 
so that's from Space Babies. Let's talk to chat. What are you guys saying? That's the most important thing. Um, da -da 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 -da. Celebratory pot pie. Not today, unfortunately. I haven't got a pot pie because it's Easter. I've got chocolate instead. Ah, kinder. I haven't got an Easter egg. I went to co-op. Other supermarket brands are available. But I went to co-op and I was heartfully disappointed with the sheer lack of fucking Easter eggs. Um, but yeah, <laughs> when's the trailer dropping? Not sure. I presume, um, we're getting a trailer at 6 p.m. Jesus Christ, I can't afford to fucking stream for, like, that long. My God, guys, what are you, what are you doing? Um, but yes, I'm here, this, I'm free today. I am, I'm not busy, I'm not doing anything. Um, so I was like, let's do a stream. Let's do a stream. TV Zone, albeit very helpful all the time, aren't they? Ah, okay, here we go. Yeah. I mean, they kind of work that out pretty quickly because it's not going to be every 10 minutes. That would have been nice, though. But yes, so a 2.30 episode title, so that's coming up, which I believe is The Devil's Court. Um, stream twice in one day? We could stream twice in one day. It really depends. I'm happy to just stream for as long as I kind of want today until I feel uncomfortable, but... Yeah, I should have got an energy drink from the shop. I didn't do that. That was a bit of a shame. I'm surprised they're doing it this early. I can't lie. But this actually makes sense if they're doing it one at a time. I was kind of like, oh my god, two o'clock. I didn't think for a second they'd start doing it now. So I was like doing something else and then came back to it. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> um, there is a bloody thing. So yeah. Fun. Oh. But thank you to everyone who's tuning in. 59 of you. That's incredible. Something I'm going to do is um, be clever. So, yeah, I mean, this is a great... Um, it's a fun little stream. I don't. This is going to be a very messy stream. So I guess what we'll do is the, the old classic. We will um, play a little bit of 13 in between, um, <laughs> in between everything else. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of annoying that we already know the episode 2 title being The Devil's Court. And Space Babies, I think, was already kind of predicted anyway, so that's interesting. But the other ones will be new. I think episode 3 is also... If, if episode 3 is a Stephen Moffat one, I think that's called Boom. So we'll see that, potentially. Um, but yeah, very nice, very nice indeed. Du, 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 du. I'm just going to add something to the corner of this stream. Very happy for the trailer. I love this stuff like this when fans are able to either stream or wait, watch the trailers in unison. This is the whole fucking point behind the the um, the launch times thing, right? Like the, the whole thing about the Doctor Who launch times being not at midnight because of simultaneous viewing. I know that's just us people in the UK a lot, like, complaining. And everyone else in the world is just kind of like, oh, guys, shut up. And, yeah, I've made peace with it. I'll watch it at midnight, you know. Hey-ho, Pip and Dandy. But it is moderately annoying. I can't deny. And it still does grind my gears a little bit. But what can we do? We can't do anything about that. Boom was mentioned in the leak, but I have also a feeling that that is going to be the episode title. Because that leak seemed relatively, I don't know, decent. <laughs> um. Where did you save that, George? That was very clever. I saved something and now it's completely disappeared altogether and that's really, really clever of me, actually. Why did I do that? I just wanted to get something on screen there, but I, I've missed my opportunity, I think. Branding. Of course it's in the branding folder. That would make sense. There we go. Let's get that on the screen here. Just a cheeky little QR code for you there. Let's hope that actually works, otherwise that is entirely pointless. Yes, it does. <laughs> Very nice. Welcome, Hoovian Life. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, happy trailer announcement, Doctor Who day kind of thing. What time should we expect the trailer? 6pm, I believe, is the time currently being discussed for the Doctor Who trailer. 
Um, that is a nostalgia bit QR code. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for um, for you know joining in today, guys. Really love that. Um, lovely to see you all. You haven't missed the trailer. Don't you worry, Adrian. You have not missed the trailer. Happy Easter, though. Um, enjoy some chocolate. Sit back. We're going to have a new episode title announced every half hour. And as we do on this live stream, or what we're going to do on this live stream, I've decided just now, um, is that every half an hour when we get a new episode title, we're actually going to um, go through which episode that might be. We're going to try and work, look at the trailer that's released from last week. The Disney Plus trailer. I'm going to put this fan on me because I'm bloody boiling. Um, that's very loud though, isn't it? Jesus. Um... But yeah, we're going to basically go through every single episode title that gets announced, what episode that looks like it's going to be, and then go through the Disney Plus trailer and work out what episode that actually is in the long run. Very exciting stuff. Should be a fun stream. I don't know how long I'm going to stream for, but we'll um, we'll we'll do what we do. The next tr um, the next title announcement is in seven minutes and counting. Um, so in the meantime, we're going to just chat to you guys. Feel free to ask any and all questions um, that you want to ask. It's eight episodes. Every half an hour, me and we're seven and a half hours. No? No, because eight episodes every half an hour, that's two an hour, so that would be four hours? Um... Really curious what's going on with Ruby. The flashes what would look like different versions of her in the ch changes bit in the trailer. That's a good point. I never thought about that. If you could watch any episode for the first time again, what would it be? World Enough in Time would be incredible. I'd love to see World Enough in Time again. Just for, like, for the first time. I mean, I know I can watch it again on BBC iPlayer, but, you know, that would be a one to see again for the first time. Um... I don't know. There's so many. There's so many. It's still ages away. But the clever... I mean, I, I was a bit like, oh, at first, because I was kind of hoping I'd be able to do a live stream and it'd be like an hour and not have to do that. But actually, I kind of like that. And the reason I like that is because it's it's good for, like, branding. It kind of releases it slowly throughout the day and everyone goes, oh, there's a new one, oh, there's a new one, and everyone gets talking about it. Um, which is fantastic. Ooh. But yeah, um, we're going to just be finding things to do in the meantime. Um, I've got some projects to tease and stuff like that. Um, I, I Very excitedly, I haven't done much Doctor Who content creation in a while. I've actually got a video, which is now edited. It's now on YouTube, ready to be published. Now, it's not... It is kind of like a bit of old repurposed content, but it is... St I, I, I watched it last night after editing it, and I was like... This is actually funny. I actually think this is really good. And I think this is good content. And I'm excited to get it out there. And that will be coming very, very soon. Um, very soon. It's literally ready to go. I'm just trying to work out when it's uh, when it's going to be. Um, I think the trailer should reveal something. But I kind of hope it doesn't. Because I'm already excited for the series. I don't need to know anymore. We're going to open some Kinder Chocolate. Because it's Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Hope you're all having a lovely time. Tell me in the chat, what is your go-to Easter egg kind of flavour? Do you go for like a, a Cadbury's kind of basic? Or do you go for something a bit fancy for our Rocher maybe? Um, or do you go for like a Malteser egg? I know they're quite popular. So, yeah. What do you think of the title Space Babies though? Yeah, um, I don't really know how I feel about it. It's kind of a strange title, especially for like a new show, but I think they're kind of going with that approach where it's like the episode titles don't matter as much to general audiences. Um, <laughs> quite, it's mad, isn't it? Uh, people keep, keep bringing up their drunk lords to me. It's like, yeah, but thank you, Hollow Boy, for, for remembering a show that it lives very well in my memory. Um, it's not drunk lords. Uh, that's probably not going to happen for the foreseeable future. Um, obviously, because I don't make content creation anymore. Too, I don't drink as much now. <laughs> and... Um, and I'm also not in uni, so that's quite harder to kind of get around. It was very much of a uni thing. I loved it. We actually recorded two new episodes of that, like, ages and ages and ages ago. But just it just the um, recording failed, so we couldn't um, edit them and, and 
bring them to light. But I was planning to get them out a few years ago for New Year and uh, Christmas, one year. But I can't remember when that was. It was a long time ago, though. It was two houses ago for me, so that's... Mm. Here the analyzer has cream egg, absolutely fire, love that. Basic Cadbury's or Milky Bar, again, banging. Cadbury's, love the fruit and nut one. Ugh, fruit and nut. It's too healthy for a, a Easter. Um, also, he's a bunny egg. Ooh. Dark chocolate like Bourneville. Hmm. I do say that, as much as I'm sort of like, when I'm not doing more like Drunk Lords, for example, or other older stuff like that, um, I do really, really appreciate people like yourself who kind of show interest in those things because for me it's like I kind of feel like people have just forgotten about all those old projects that I used to do and it's it's nice. It's nice that you guys still care about it and still remember those sort of things. Ooh, Lindor. Bloody hell. Just imagine someone asking what their favourite Doctor Who episode is and they just blankly stare and say Space Babies. That is quite a funny statement, actually. <laughs> um, so it's every half an hour. So we've got our next title announcement in about a minute and a half. I believe this episode two... Well, it's obviously going to be episode two. I believe it's episode two. But I believe this is going to be The Devil's Chord. Um, so the only real new information here will just be whatever they show in the promo. I guess the little four-second promo for Space Babies was kind of cool. We get the sort of vibe of like a nursery, drawings on the wall, horror angle with that creepy sort of bogeyman. I have a feeling with the bogeyman they're going to go in the angle of making him actually something to do with like children's babies like bogeys. I feel like they've made this joke before where it's like, oh, he's called the bogeyman, but he's actually a bogeyman. Um, which I think is a bit silly, but... Underrated 13th Doctor Story and why? Which Finders? Because it's fucking great and no one credits it as being like their, one of their faves. It's a really solid story. It's proper classic Doctor Who for me. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, right, 30 seconds until episode 2 is revealed. So let's go back to the Twitter page. Um, yeah. Are they releasing it on YouTube as well? Presumably not. They're missing a trick, though, if they're not. Presumably they'll, they'll release the trailer on there, but they don't want to, like, counteract that, I guess. No, they haven't, you see. Oh, well. 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, and refresh! The Devil's Chord! Dun, 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 dun. Not getting much out of that. Not getting much out of that. Um, interesting, though. So this is written by Russell T. Davis again and directed by Ben Chesel. Chesel? Has he been announced as a director yet? Um, I don't know if he's been direct uh, announced as a director yet for Doctor Who. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit out of the loop with who's been... Um, mentioned as directing so far decent amount of TV experience there upcoming Doctor Who there we go two episodes Devil's Court and episode 6 as well interesting interesting um yeah and Timothy Drake is interesting as well the name that's on there so Timothy Drake oh Tim Drake as in fucking <laughs> There's nothing about they, they, they're clever using a name that's already quite popular in pop culture there. Um, directing the Regency episode as well. Mm, interesting. I'm gobsmacked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the little animations, I think they're brilliant. And they're proper, like, just something... It's just... 
a lot of people were theorizing that the, the announcement today would be the trailer we got last Eurovision where it's just a little minute long trailer where it's like a few shots from the episode and then the title a few shots from the episode then the title I love that they're doing it like this I think it's brilliant I think it really it keeps people engaged all day keeps people talking about it all day it's not just one announcement and done um so we've got Space Babies in the Devil's Court. Like that. Welcome, um, Davis, as well. Lovely to see you here, mate. Um, yeah, episode two is evil music, Lily. I believe Jinx Monsoon's character. I don't know if has has an actual name. Anthony Drake, some people are saying. Is the Devil's Court an actual thing? No... Hmm. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I can't find anything on that. Anyone with any information would be lovely. Um, I do like this way to release titles. Very cool. Yeah, Rusty Davis is really nailing the promo and publicity stuff. I remember when it was TVAs in Doctor Who magazine? Oh God, those were the days, weren't they? Back in revealing in Doctor Who magazine, a little bit of information on each story, and they like kind of reveal like a most of a season in advance. I remember that with them. Um, Season five, season series, sorry, series five, series six ish. Um, the first three notes of the Simpsons are part of the Devil's Chord. It's a tritone. Oh, see, there's someone who knows their music more than me. What is the Devil's Chord? Ah, Devil's Chord is Devil's Interval. Devil's Interval is a diminished fifth D five. The fourth. See, I don't know my music enough to know what that is. But that's interesting that it's an actual thing, but I wonder if that's just a cheeky name of the uh, sort of double entendre title more than it is a, um, an actual reference to that, like in the story. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the trailer and which episode that actually is. So we know that we talked about this last week as well. The Devil's Chord is the Beatles episode. So any episode that we see the Doctor uh, in the sort of um, wig and... Uh, 60s get up so this here is from the devil's cord um same with ruby's outfit as well it's quite recognizable jinx monsoon and um the old lady getting attacked this is from that's from the devil's cord as well which is very fun uh that's from the devil's cord we've got someone coming through one of the drums in abbey road studios um what else have we got here can't show too much of it without getting copyrighted. Oh, this whole thing of the destruction of London. This is Devil's Court, because you can see by Ruby's outfit. And you can see them stood there as well. Quite sad, quite solemn. That's obviously from the Devil's Court. Same outfits there. Um, and then you've, of course, got the shot of uh, Ruby with the music notes wrapped around her. Um, that's obviously from the Devil's Court as well. Interesting. Um... And as is this shot here with the doctor putting the light on, maybe, un maybe under a stage at Abbey Road or something along those lines, under a stage somewhere maybe. I'm not sure. Um, interesting. Yeah, all these musical number bits are from the Devil's Chord as well. All the dancing in the rain stuff. Uh, so that's super exciting. Love that. Um, <clears throat> Russell on Productions, welcome. Adam Leach, look at the Devil's Interval. This is where I lose my um, understanding of anything. <sighs> Dissonant that's earned the nickname The Devil's Interval and was avoided for centuries by composers and the people as they taught. Hmm. What does it sound like? The Devil's Interval. Tritone. The Tritone. Okay. Tone step. Tritone is also half an octave. Here's an octave. Tone. Yeah. This. A lot of talking. I have I have brain rot TikTok attention span. I can't watch this shit. <laughs> no, I'm sure that's very useful. Sorry about that. Um. Do 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 do. So yes. Have a look at what people are saying as well. Um, piano Sonata number 14. That's also a good shout as well. Yeah, it's definitely a piece of classical music. Dun, 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 dun. It's kind of like a sort of teasing, childlike 
um, play. Kind of good, though. These are great. Like, if we just point that out, that's fucking like, incredible. I love that. I really love that. It's really, really cool. Um, that's sick. One forty four in the trailer where the glasses crash. Oh yeah. So this I got I got told off about this because I said in my breakdown that it was a um, like a wrecking ball, as of a lot of people. But a lot of um, but a lot of people have pointed out there's actually a stool, and I completely missed this these legs here. Um, you're right, it is a stool being thrown through the window. Um, a lot of people from this you seen this looks like a crack in the wall. Kind of. I think that's pure coincidence. Oh, it's the, <laughs> it's the Horrid Henry theme. You guys are right. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's a great call. Um, no, 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 no. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, God. That's good. Um, the shot of destroyed 60s London really reminds me of the Matt Smith adventure games where a similar thing happened in the Dalek one. Yes. Um... Yes, I can't remember what it's called now. Something of the Daleks, and you go to London in the 1960s, funnily enough. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, that's kind of weird, because at the beginning of that story, didn't they go like, oh, we're going to go and meet the Beatles in the 60s? And they end up in a sort of destroyed London. Oh, my God. Wow. Interesting. Um, The Devil's Chord is a tritone known to be... Uh, so dissonant that the church considered it the devil's chord. Bach was excommunicated from the church when he placed it in his music. So the church are so bloody weird, man. City of the Daleks, that's it. Favorite outfit for fifteen in Ruby. Um, oh, I don't know actually. I think. Mm, I don't know. Like, honestly, I really don't know. I think the like church and Ruby Road ones are like the iconic like starting ones. Yeah, yeah, they did. In City of the Daleks, they started the story by going, oh yeah, let's go and meet the Beatles. And then, like, Karen Gillan's talking about fucking Ringo not being a sexy drummer. And it's like, oh, there he is a sexy drummer or whatever. And I don't know what the conversation was. And then they arrive and the Earth is completely destroyed because the Daleks have taken over and changed history. Yes, that is City of the Daleks. And that's, that's again, another just destroyed London aesthetic in Doctor Who. Uh, very, very interesting. Very interesting. I completely forgot about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is not a very comfortable t-shirt. And I'm going to change it off camera. Because this is... Um, if this is going to be like a, a few hours long stream, then I'm, I'm, I'm not just sitting here in an uncomfortable t-shirt. I don't know what the fuck that was. But it is a City of Death t-shirt though, look. I've got a Doctor Who t-shirt on. I was I was prepping ahead, it's just not it's not entirely comfortable on me. So bear, bear that in mind a second. There we go. In a claw for the win. <laughs> oh, that's much more comfortable. So, so we're getting one every thirty minutes and a trailer at the end. I believe that's the case. Yeah, it seems that way. It certainly seems that way. Um, so yeah, we've got another twenty minutes till the next one. Let's play some thirteen. I love this game because it's too addictive and it's uh, a Doctor Who game so you can play it and it works and it's good. But feel free to ask any sort of questions, any sort of theories. We'll still talk Doctor Who, obviously. Those of you done Macabre by Camille Sons. Interesting. I can't play it on stream, but um, for obvious reasons. But that is interesting. Do, 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 do. It is a great game. It's very addictive, though. That's the, the problem I find is it is almost too addictive. I want them to release more games like this, though. Or more just website games in general. I don't give a shit about, like, big-scale video games or Fortnite collaborations. I want more games like this. 
This is where the fun begins. I think the thing is they could update this to 15, but no one would bloody know because no one can get far enough down the bloody game. That's the problem. Oh, fucking hell, George, you idiot. Hmm. Yeah, I do kind of wish they updated this with 15 as well, but you never know. I mean, it's one of those things. I, I want, I want just more flash games like this. I think that just be that that would be where the thrill is for me, just having more daft games like this. I think they're great. I think they're so stupid, but they they are like a, very, a lot of addictive fun, aren't they? That's the that's the the thing behind it. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh actually that's worked out quite well. Oh that's beautiful. Look at that. Oh stunning. That's worked incredibly well. I don't like the fact that it jolts up and down, though. I actually have never seen... Um, and I've not seen anyone get to 13 before. Best I've done, I think, ever is Matt Smith. But I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. I genuinely don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, we'll play it. We'll play around of this, and then we'll talk some more bollocks, talk some more Doctor Who bollocks while we're waiting for the next trailer. Just gonna pass the timey wimey. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you're all well. Um, nice to see some new faces here as well. If this is one of your first times joining us, we usually stream every single Tuesday talking about the latest Doctor Who news um, as part of this show, which is called The Who Bulletin. We do it pretty much every Tuesday whenever there's news. If there's not news, then we don't do anything um, and we just go straight over to Twitch where I play some video games instead. Um, but usually on Tuesdays, we do... Uh, we do stream here on YouTube when there's news to talk about and, um, yeah, talk about the latest in the world of Doctor Who. So if this is your kind of thing, I mean, your kind of thing, watch me play video games. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants that, George. Uh, nice one. But if, you know, if this is your kind of thing and you could see yourself popping in for a future stream, then we'd absolutely love to have you there. So, yeah, that would be lovely. Uh, okay. You know, one day I will actually complete this. Oh! Straight to Eccleston. Hardcore. Love that. Kind of fucked it a little bit with this, though, I feel. Okay, there we go. Just need to sort of get the ones. Don't ever get a heart nor trapped on the bottom. Honorary Lois for the stream. <laughs> um, what was your first episode of Doctor Who? What was your first episode? Dalek was my first episode of Doctor Who. Um, not, I didn't know what it was when I saw it because at the time it was on TV. My dad was watching it and I was um, probably only about, I would have been about four years old maybe. Only just. Um, and then about a year later... I started watching the show properly with my dad, um, who introduced me with the episode of Rose, of course, you know, the beginning of the Revival series. So all of New Who is is my sort of starting point for Doctor Who. Um, I wasn't a Wilderness Years kid. I just about missed out on that demographic. And I'm kind of glad because my dad wasn't really into sort of later Doctor Who. He wasn't like a huge fan of it. So I'm kind of glad in a way because I feel like if, if I was born in that era, I would never have got into Doctor Who. 
Um, maybe maybe I would have anyway. I don't know. But I think because it was coming back, and my dad was like, "Oh, I remember this from from way back when I was a kid," you know. And they got Chris Eccleston. That'll be good. Um, I was like, "Oh, okay. Maybe I'll maybe I will give this a give this a chance," you know. I'm talking bollocks now. I've realised I'm just talking absolute shite again. As per... <laughs> oh, come on, George. You're better than this. You're better than this. Um, I wish I was old enough to start on 9. My first episode was Smith & Jones, I think. I always watched the repeats on BBC3 when I started. I was about 2. Oh, my God. Before when Dalek Ed, yeah, I, I mean, I was born in two thousand and one. I, I, to be fair though, I do have, I do have this on on good authority that I come across as older than I actually am, which is a lovely compliment. Thanks. No, um, but it's yeah, it's it's one of those things. I feel like people assume that I'm older than I am. Fuck, I didn't want to do that. Oh, that's really annoying. Okay. Okay, we're just going to have to keep Eccleston down there, you know. <laughs> yeah, 2001. That's it. <laughs> it's a good year. I think it's a good year for Who fans to be to be born, I think. I think. I think. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I was born, so it must be. I thought I'd, I thought I'd ruin that there, you know. Annoying that we've sort of got a, a Peter Davison there because we sort of don't really need a Peter Davison there. We need one a bit further down, but you know we move. Oh no! Perfect. Oh, that's so satisfying. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, it was a good time for Doctor Who fans. Which big bad uh, do you, uh, returning does it, uh, that does it, do you think that returns it, does it, I uh, oh, fuck me, that was awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> I presume, right, which big bad do I want to see it return, presumably? Uh, I would, I don't know, I think the great intelligence could be done better. It's coming from someone who's never seen a classic Great Intelligence story. And I think it could be done better. So I don't know what that tells you. Or other than maybe everything. I don't know. I don't think it's the best villain of all time. No, I don't. But I, I, I like the idea of it. And I think it could be done so much better. I love the idea of these celestial powers in Doctor Who. They're so interesting and cool. The toy maker is another one of those that just is fucking sick. And I'm glad they really did the Toymaker somewhat justice, you know. They actually did something really interesting with that character, I think. They really modernised it and, and made it something to really, like, be excited about, you know. The general audiences would be like, wow, this is a cool character. No, that was me. I butchered that as well. <laughs> um, do you want to start watching Classic Q? Now it's on iPlayer. Um... See, I'm a very strange case, right? I have bought every single one of the collection box sets. Every single one. Not a joke. Um, and I think they're brilliant. However, I've probably not even seen half of the... I definitely haven't seen half the stories. I've probably seen about a couple of them on those DVDs, which is really bad, considering I've spent actual fucking money on them. <laughs> Nice. Oh, this is this is not going to end well now. I can sort of see this coming a mile off. Okay.
Got two Paul McGann's, but not together. It's kind of annoying, really, isn't it? Got two Sylvester McCoys, but not together. I'm really great at this game. Um, I should keep an eye on the time as well, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, so we'll do this round and then I guess we'll look at the next title when that gets announced. Um, fucking two Peter Davison's, it's not useful, is it? Ah! Yeah, this is not gonna. This is not a very successful game. It's not not anywhere near my best. Okay. Now I'm fucked. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn, 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 damn. Okay. Well, we'll come back to another round of that in a bit, maybe. But yes, let's stick, let's stick on Twitter for now. See what people are saying. Um, eight minutes until the next one. Is there 71 of you watching live at the minute? Holy shit. That's insane, man. That's better than any of my fucking Tuesday stats. Maybe I should stream on Tuesdays, uh, Sundays more often. God damn, welcome everyone. Hello. If you're not if you are new here, we do stream every Tuesday at about seven o'clock till eight o'clock. Um when there's Doctor Who news. So tune in for more of this, I guess. I mean it's not really that interesting. It's been playing thirteen for half of it, but we're gonna be reacting and talking and breaking down all of the titles as soon as they arrive. We've got another one in about five minutes. Um So yeah. Bloody hell. I appreciate the people sticking around. This is great stuff, and I'm I'm super excited to be streaming to you guys today. Um, yeah, I did. I used to do a lot of regular Doctor Who content back in the day. You might remember me. <laughs> Probably not. Um, let's have a look at the channel. I, I removed a lot of old content. Maybe I'll add it back at some point. I probably should do that this weekend. Maybe today. Um, used to make a lot of lovely. Welcome, Shrek Matt. Happy Easter. Used to make a lot of content back in the day. Um, some oh god, look at my bloody face in these thumbnails. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's fun. Um, oh man, this is this is just like sad though. <laughs> kind of views I used to fucking get. Jesus Christ, man. Oh. Um, if you're not aware of what I do nowadays, uh, I do sometimes make content. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm making more content. There is some more stuff in the pipeline. Um, I've got a video which I've just uploaded yesterday, exported, ready. It's ready to be uploaded, but it's not going to be going out yet, but it'll probably be in the next week or so. Ace Creeper, rest in peace. He's still here. I'm still here. I'm still doing stuff, you know. Um, but um, I've got new content coming out, new Doctor Who content. I've got an actual new Doctor Who video, which I am working on slowly but surely. It's taking a little bit of time. Um... And I've got a couple of like sort of cut down highlights videos of um, live streams that I've done in the past. Um, so, um, but that's, yeah, that's all coming soon. So if you are interested and you are new here, um, obviously we do streams on Tuesdays, but if you are looking out for new Doctor Who content, um, of a somewhat decent quality, because I do try my best, <laughs> um, do feel free to subscribe, all that sort of lovely stuff, would really appreciate it. But yeah, very fun stuff. Um, I'm trying to work out what's what's next um and i also have a podcast which i do i'm gonna witter on about in this live stream as well but i'd really appreciate if you guys check it out because i've been going jesus christ i just open your spotify george that's a good idea um it's called nostalgia bit um me and my mate cooper are doing it um cooper helped me film a lot of the old doctor who ace creeper reviews back in the day i did like skits of like day of the doctor and all that sort of stuff he helped me film those he's been heavily involved with this channel um and behind in a behind the scenes capacity so it's really nice to be doing a project with him um 
in the forefront and we will be doing the doctor who episode very very soon obviously with the new series on the horizon so i'm very excited for that one um but it's a bit of a variety thing we've got a bit of star wars in there a bit of newcastle a bit of oscars a bit of spider-man a uh, bit of fnaf a bit of westworld but yeah would really really appreciate it if you guys check this out and drop us a follow on spotify um and possibly a review if you really fancy it i'll put a link in the chat to make it easy for you it is linked to the description and the qr code was on screen before as well so um yeah i'd really appreciate that i'll probably mention it a couple times this stream i'm not going to whisper on about it but that is something i'm currently actively working on this podcast so any support on that would be greatly appreciated and if you want to watch episodes on youtube because you don't have a spotify you can go on the podcast section and view full podcast here and all the episodes are in this little hidden podcast folder so yeah um would really appreciate if you check that out i'll probably mention that a few more times in the stream because it's a project that we do new episodes every single thursday so it's a, a bit of an ongoing one that i'm very excited to be getting out there uh but yeah that and what else yeah streams on tuesdays and that's about that we'll probably look at some old content in a bit because we've got a bit of time so we'll probably have a look at some of the old percy the cat videos and stuff um but yeah in the meantime we've got three minutes two minutes pretty much until we've got a brand new thing but yeah please do check out the podcast drop us a follow a rating if you fancy it and if you ha- want to listen to some episodes that would be great as well we're really just trying to grow it so um if you want some more regular content creation from myself um that's the place to go for it um doctor who two minutes time new episode title in about a minute and a half so this, I think, is going to be the episode three. I think it's going to be written by Stephen Moffat and directed by Julianne Robinson, I believe. It's that one. And I think it's going to be called Boom. That's my prediction. So far, I'm three for three on predictions. That's because half of them have been leaked already. <laughs> but past the first three, I'm not sure. I don't know any of them. So those are the ones I'm most excited for. So yeah, my prediction is boom. Being a bit cheeky there. Let's get that out there. Um, No, no. Now, people misquote me on this. And I'll rant about that in a minute because we're about to get a new title. But I'll quickly say... I never said that I would eat my hat if the Sea Devils returned. I said I would eat my hat if the Sea Devils returned in Series 12, which they fucking didn't. <laughs> so that... That is... No. No, 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 no. We're not... We're, that's a no, no. We're not doing that. Okay, three, two, and one on the hour. What have we got? Boom! <laughs> written by Stephen Moffat. So that is that that leak was true then. That's interesting. Boom. <laughs> Some sort of facility of sorts. Cool little animatic. Uh right, uh, Stephen Moffat, Julianne Robinson. So let's have a look at the official trailer. Once again, let's have a look at what actual episodes these are gonna be. So boom is the episode where the doctor stands on a landmine. And you got Ruby fighting with a gun, laser gun kind of thing. Um, let's find that one. It is somewhere. Oh, maybe I'll have to try and find it annoyingly. This one here. Perfect timing, George. This one is from Boom. We talked about this last time because there's a lot going on in this one. Um, uh, we've got. The Doctor in the background seemingly standing on a landmine, little green sort of thing around it. We saw that in the first trailer, which we'll go back to in just a second. Um, Ruby firing her laser gun in the foreground. Some sort of big chair thing here, or some sort of big stuff, whatever. There's a character here, there's a character here, and there's a sort of glowing character here, which I'm not really sure about, but they look like a force ghost, so that's interesting. Another one word Moffat title to join the lineup, such as Blink and Listen. Love that. Um... What else have we got in terms of, yeah, um, 
let's have a look at the original season one teaser trailer that we got way back when. Here we go. So this one. I forgot about this trailer. There's also stuff to break down in here as well, so we should probably talk about that. Um, the Beatles, obviously. This here, the landmine. Here you go. This is the episode Boom. This is the one written by Stephen Moffat. That is, um, it's usually standing on a landmine and it activating. That's an interesting question as well. Yeah, is this going to be a sort of uh, Ruby, angry Ruby Doctor vibe with Ruby using a gun? Again, one of the key rules of the Doctor, you know, don't use guns. So I'm interested to see how they're going to do that, what they're going to do to incorporate that. Um,. Who knows? Who knows? I'm super interested though. We'll have to wait and see exactly what that's all about. But um, that's the one I think we knew most about. From here on in, I know nothing. God, I shouldn't be showing that. <laughs> it's just old videos, but still. Damn. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's from Boom. I think that's... I think this one's also from Boom, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like the same outfit. So again, same one. Some sort of alien planet. The Doctor stands on a landmine and Luby... Uh, Luby? Fuck's sake. What a, what a horrendous slip up for a name. Ruby <laughs> has to defend him um, from whatever's going on. So that's interesting. That's very interesting indeed. Love to see that. Damn, that's crazy. Um... It's going to be a fucking long live stream, isn't it? I just realised that. I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to be sat here for like another fucking hour plus. Um, that's pretty good, though. Yeah, we've got a couple there. That's something to talk about. Um, I wish they were doing every 15 minutes. <laughs> um... Do you think there's any reliable leaks from episode four onwards? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I, that was a. I did not mean to call it Luby Sunday. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the moth was doing boom. Uh, I was at his most recent talk at Glasgow Uni, and he said that Rusty Davis called the script dynamite, and then he giggled a bit as if he was in on some sort of joke. Um, all the Doctor Who episode titles as they get announced. Uh, I love promoting stuff on Twitter, and love is a lie, completely a lie. No, <laughs> that would be a good way to promote the podcast, wouldn't it? Just post the incorrect link. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Damn, damn, damn. Um, I love that they're releasing these animatics. Also, we kind of love if there were like static high res images as well. Episode 4 is rumored to be the wrong baptism. Interesting. Interesting. That's going to be more theorizing. So, we know which one Boom was, we know which one the Devil's Cord is, we knew which one the Space Babies ones is because of the outfits. Episode 4, I don't think we know anything about. And we'll have to use the animatic to kind of really look into exactly what's going on there, why we should be paying attention to it. What what episode it might be? <laughs> That's good. That's good. Don't mean to click Twitter Premium there. And yeah, follow me on Twitter if you're not already. Come on. Um, is it episode four the Regency one or is that episode six? And yeah, obviously, follow me on Twitter if you're not already. <laughs> Um, yeah. All known names have been released now. I think so. I think I think that is the case. I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit as well. 
But yeah, I've not got any plans today. I'm a miserable, miserable, boring man. <laughs> um, I've got a source here telling me apparently they know what the episode 4 title is, so you might get a bit of an exclusive here, if we have. <laughs> but I will let you know exactly what that is as soon as uh, I'm given the go-ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not allowed to say it. <laughs> Bollocks. But yeah, I'm excited to see what this is going to be. Um, but, um, but yeah, fun. When all is given, which title tickles your fancy? Oh, out of the ones there currently? I think Boom's a bit lazy, but it sort of works as a solid episode title. Um, I think Boom is an interesting one. I think it kind of hits that nail on the head of being like an interesting. What's your favorite episode of Doctor Who? Oh yeah, Boom. Like a one-word titles are always fun. I love that. Devil's Chord is a proper classic Doctor Who title. I love that. Space Babies is is what it is. It's a bit fucking lazy, but it. it I mean, that sounds cruel. It's not lazy. It's just kind of like. Space babies. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. It's it's a bit of a like a naff one for the beginning of the series, you know. What do we what do you have for other ones like New Earth? is like a cool series starter. Um, we also have. What else do we have? Why am I being so dim all of a sudden? Smith and Jones, interesting. Partners in Crime, interesting. Um, I always thought Partners in Crime was called Partners in Time. Which would have been a much better title, by the way. I always thought it was called that. I thought Partners in Crime is the saying, but Partners in Time? Eh? Eh? But apparently it's just called Partners in Crime. Um, the Eleventh Hour. Um, Impossible Astronauts. What else we got? I'm trying to think of all the beginnings of every series. Uh, Asylum of the Daleks. Yeah. Deep Breath. Um, the Witches. No. Magician's Apprentice. Uh, it's a bit of a goofy one, that one, to be fair. <laughs> um, the Pilot. That's shite. Um, the Woman Who Fell to Earth. Spyfall. Terrible. Terrible name. <laughs> and the Halloween Apocalypse. Most episode one titles are pretty, like, big, grand ones. So Space Babies is a little bit like, oh. That's kind of funky. Space Baby sounds a bit like child, a bit childish, but I, I, I like it. I like it within the context of the story. If it's if it's a horror and it's more creepy and like more adult, then I'll love it because it's a real good like spin on that. The Battle of Ranskorav Kolos is probably one of the worst Doctor Who titles going, but I guess it's it's kind of in keeping with classic Who, isn't it? By just having like a really obvious made up name as part of the uh, the whole thing. Um, But yeah, I think Spyfall's a bit of a naff one. 
No, they are partners in crime. I just always thought it was called partners in time. It was like a Mandela effect thing. I always thought it was called partners in time, but apparently it's not. Apparently it's partners in crime, which doesn't make any sense to me because partners in time is a cooler title. No, but the, but there, I know there's not much time travel in partners in crime, but then there's not much crime either, I guess. I, I mean, maybe there is. I don't fucking know. I just think like it's a fun play on the phrase. Do you have a favourite Doctor Who title? You know what? I kind of like Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. I didn't love the episode that much, but I love the title. <laughs> it Takes You Away is also a good one. Love and Monsters is also a great title. I kind of like it. I mean, I don't know if you're being sarcastic, but I quite like both of those. Partners in Time is rumoured to be a spin-off. Yeah, that's not happening. There's no way they're getting 14 and Donna to do a spin-off. That's... No. <laughs> it's just not happening. Um, well. So this is the other thing as well. Stephen Moffat apparently talked about um, Boom, or sort of mentioned the word Boom in his, um, in like an interview or something recently. So that was something of interest. And a lot of people were saying, oh, which one was this? Is it... This isn't, yeah. So he met, because it's rumoured that Stephen Moffat's also going to be writing the Christmas special. Um, and he sort of says, da -da 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 -da, and he says, boom, in an interview talking about Doctor Who. The truth is, if I say anything negative about Doctor Who, it goes everywhere. Like, boom, everywhere, right? Yeah, he's mentioned that on purpose. It doesn't exactly bring joy to the world that I say, um, that I just say something negative about Doctor Who. The fact is, it's fine without me. So, joy to the world is rumoured to be the title. Um, for the Christmas special that Stephen Moffat is apparently writing, but fuck knows how true that is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't dislike Spyfall as a name. I just hear how Sp Spyfall Part 1 and Spyfall Part 2. Two different names for two different parters. I also dislike that they did that with the end of time. Um, I agree, actually. The end of time made more sense. Spyfall was just kind of a bit strange one because it's like a series starter and the two episodes were quite different in approach. I would have been more interested to see... Um, them do other Bond titles. And, and there's so many. And I know a lot of people have made some like, goofy suggestions, myself included. But I think there's so many great titles um, that they could have used for that, that story. Like from Gallifrey with Love for the second one would have been great. Do you prefer the girl with the star in her eye over the pilot? I think the first one's good. Um, was it not just called A Star in Her Eye? I'm pretty sure it was just that, wasn't it? I don't know if it was the girl bit was in there. Not a fan of Space Babies, the rest slap. Hey, George, by the way. Hello, Xander Grogan. Welcome to the stream. Uh, from Gallifrey with Love would have been great instead of The Timeless Children. But that would have been... Spyfall Part 2 should have been called Gallifrey with Love. Not The Timeless Children's fine, because that's the finale. It's separate. Like The spy-related ones should have had more... There's so many James Bond titles they could have took from. I'm not talking about Casino Royale or whatever, but... or. I don't know, TARDIS Royale. I mean, it's a bit naff, but I'm saying, like, Spyfall. But then I guess they it's sort of a joke in itself. They know what they're doing with it, I guess. Um, I'm going to zoom in my camera a little bit, because it's a little bit zoomed out, and it's starting to bug me. Now, we've been streaming for over an hour. Um, it's starting to annoy me a little bit. Also, let's fucking focus this bastard properly. I always... I, this is the one thing now. I've got a, I've got a fancy bloody... Uh, El Gato thing where I can read your guys' comments whilst looking into my camera. A little El Gato prompter. Best thing I've ever got, but the problem is I can't actually touch the bloody camera that I'm supposed to be working on, so I have to like try and. Grow. My, my skin looks very smooth. I'm not just trying to gas myself up, it just looks very shiny today. A Time Lord who loved me. Exactly. Exactly. You only regenerate once. See, again, just brilliant. Just a lot of great ideas. In fact, actually, that's a challenge for you all watching now, all 79 of you while we're waiting for the next title in 15 minutes time. Um, tell me your best Doctor Who, James Bond title mix-ups. From Gallifrey with Love is brilliant. Um, you only regenerate once. Um, the Time Lord who loved me, TARDIS ball. <laughs> License to regenerate. Um, Oh, I love 
yeah, it's interesting. This will be, I think, will be the first time in New Who or ever in Doctor Who that a non-showrunner has written the Christmas special. Which I don't really mind that much. I think Stephen Moffat writes a bloody really good Christmas special. Other than the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe, but the Christmas Carol's great. No time to regenerate. The Battle of Ranscore Av Goldfinger. That is just fucking awful. <laughs> It's funny though, I'll give you that, it's good. Time Lords are forever, yeah. No time to regenerate. Yeah, a lot of people saying that one. Uh, I'm in the wrong job, it seems. Golden Dalek. Golden Dalek, yeah, it's not too bad. Gold Dalek. Dun -dun -dun. <laughs> Enter his web of fear. There we go. <laughs> but don't go near. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. That's actually appalling. Um, the woman with the golden screwdriver. Yeah. Yeah. Regenerate regenerate another day. You can't just change the word die to regenerate. For, I know what you guys are doing. Come on, be creative. Think of some more. Um, what Bond titles are there? Dr. Pussy. <laughs> I was gonna do something like that. I was gonna do like Cyber Pussy or Dalek Pussy or something. Master Pussy. <laughs> That's brilliant. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mmm. Mmm. Another Sonic Another Day. I like that. I'm trying to work out what else. Would be good. That's really funny. Great suggestions, guys. You're very creative. Very creative, funny people. The man with the silver lady. I think that's a statue thing because I've been used was called the silver lady. Ah, yes, that's good. Time Lord who love me, live and let exterminate, live and let regenerate. Vortex Royale, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> dear me. Extermination impossible. <clears throat> There's some good ones. You guys are good. You should come up with Doctor Who episode titles. Ow! I think Doctor Who episode titles should have a bit of fun with them. A little bit like uh, Rick and Morty when they sort of take the piss out of film titles and stuff. The man with the blue box. Yeah. <clears throat> From Scarrow with Love. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> From Gallifrey with Jelly Babies. Love that. Um, yeah. We've got ten minutes till the next one. What else can we... <laughs> Hang on, why is that not one come up on my screen yet? I can see that on the screen, but I can't see it on here yet. What the fuck? No, hang on. Wait, where's the, the time agent who shagged me? That's incredible, but it's not showing up on my screen. Ah, oh, it's really annoying. <laughs> from Rax of Car from Rax of Caracol with love, brilliant. Doctor Finger, not sure about that one. Um, 
who to who, who to a kill. That would be good. That would that is really good actually. On his master secret service, yeah. From Clon with love, yeah. Um, Cyber finger. <laughs> Asylum of the sex gas, brilliant. That's just a Doctor Who title with a fucking Torchwood. <laughs> Gallifrey is forever. Cyber pussy would be better for Torchwood. Cyber pussy, yeah, that's a great one. Oh, hello, Tharys. Hello, Tharys. Let's watch him on our live stream. <laughs> fucking love Tharys, man. What a boy. He's not watching me anymore. Motherfucker. <laughs> there we go, look, we're gonna watch Tharys on our stream. My little guy. Uh, oh, only eight minutes to go as well. Yeah, we're watching. Someone tell Tharys that we're watching him on the live. I wanna get him to watch us on the live. <laughs> now, is anyone going to do it? I don't know if anyone's actually going to do it. <laughs> I don't know. He's breaking down the same stuff. This is technically a YouTube collaboration right here. I don't know whether that was deliberate for me, but it is very funny. I don't know if anyone's gonna message in his chat. I, I was sort of, I, I'm disappointed in you guys. You guys haven't, uh, you haven't done this, and it's disappointing. Well, that's a shame. I was hoping you guys would say something. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a good point from Ferries. Actually, I'm just, I'm just, I'm tuning in. There was a, there was a bloody, um, there was a, a, a triad technology thing, and <laughs> um, we, there was a, there was a triad technologies account. I think it's bullshit, and I think it's, it's not a genuine thing that we should be paying any attention to. I think it's one of those accounts. I think it's a great idea for people to get followers, but still. Damn. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the delay is like 20 seconds on YouTube, so it takes him 20 seconds to react, and then me 20 seconds to react. It's... Yeah, I'm a. I'm too fair. Let's talk about this because I'm fucking. I'm fucking with him here. It's not real. There, it's it's following BBC accounts, but it's not followed by BBC accounts or anything like that. And that's a terrible edit. I mean, fair play to whoever did it, but that I just it's it's not that good. Right. Let's start watching Thares now. I feel bad. <laughs> I was hoping he would clock on a lot quicker than that. But um. But that's funny. But maybe even if... Oh, see, he's just checked it. Fuck, hang on, let's go back. Shit, hang on. Ah! Oh, God, he's going to hear me, and then it's... Oh, it's going to be... Oh, Christ. I'll get it. I'll get it loaded back up. We'll cross the streams again. Oh, God, this is a terrible idea. It's not real. It's It's following... I can hear myself. I'm just. This is terrible. Cause I'm just. It's gonna be a loop now. I mean, fair play to whoever did it, but I just. Yeah, I agree. Wow, the subscriber animation is over my face. I didn't even think about that. Now I feel bad. I was hoping he would clock on a lot quicker. Fuck off! There we are. Oh man, that's a funny little experience. That was fun. Ah. <laughs> um, anyway, we're almost at the point of a new uh, thing, aren't we? Let's have a gander. 
yeah, the audio loop is just horrible, so let's just cut that off. Um, I'm interested to see how many people... I haven't actually been looking at my own chat here. Bloody hell. Um, this is so funny. <laughs> Crossing streams like Ghostbusters, Thares and George Seption. Oh my god. <laughs> um... Don't cross the streams. Um, yeah. Hello, Alternate 13th. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, Tharys is a good sport, man. Tharys is the feature of online Doctor Who content. I am in the past, unfortunately. I'm desperately trying to cling on to my notoriety but it's slowly slipping away but 80 of you disagree which people watching now I appreciate that um so yeah well let's wait for this episode title but then also let's talk about the triad account because that Faris was just talking about that and I had a couple of opinions on that but I think um I'm very much for it I think uh the whole triad thing is um it's definitely going to be in the series, but someone's made a Twitter account trying to be like, oh, try, try. They, it's cool. Like, you've done a good job. You've made it look official, yada, yada, yada. But it's just not going to happen unless the BBC are sharing it. Um, I'm being... So I'm being um, self-deprecating. Ooh, Tritones Triad. Interesting. We'll be talking about the Triad account in a minute. Someone basically made a Triad account on Twitter being like, it's going to be revealed in tomorrow's trailer for Doctor Who, but it's just some random account that's just been made and, and they're trying to like jump it off. Second YouTuber who I found, you were the first. I remember when Tharys was in my Discord server back in the day. I remember when Tharys was um, sharing his content in the Discord server way back when. Um... It's sweet, and he's done incredibly well, and he absolutely bloody deserves it. So fair play to him. Love the lad. He's 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 on it, you know. Fair bloody play to him. Um. But yeah, that's that's what happens, unfortunately, when you when you get a job and and sort of. I'm not, I'm not being cruel. Like that that wasn't intended to be like a, a throw around to to Thary's. That was very much a, a self thing where I know I've since I started working I haven't had the time to actually make content anymore and I just kind of ran out of that but um <clears throat> first time messaging in your chat but yes I still like watching thank you Spacey I appreciate that love you Tharys Mr. Tardis hope you stick around I really appreciate that no one can beat Ace Creeper oh this is really sweet man I wasn't actually fishing for this many compliments but I really do appreciate it anyway let's jump over to the Twitter because we're about to get a new episode in about 30 seconds I don't think I, I think I think it's one of those things where I'm I'm like I just don't make content anymore. I'm I'm trying to keep it up, but I have my other outlets. Like I have the podcast, obviously, which I'm doing every week, and I love that. I'm doing my live streams, which I love doing every week. But this is um, it's nice to jump back on this and have a bit of a a bit of a talk about Doctor Who, isn't it? Um, okay, any second, and on the hour, and uh, here we go. 73 yards. Woo! That's very mysterious. And we've got snow. So, written by Russell T. Davis again. Um, directed by Dylan Holmes Williams. That's three for three by St uh, Russell T. Davis now. Well, for three for four um, of Russell T. Davis. So, we have Space Babies, The Devil's Cord, Boom, 73 yards. Interesting. Not too sure how I uh, feel about that one. There's not really much to say about that one. You've got some sort of tree. It's like a sort of pub. So, breakdown time, everybody. Are you ready? Yeah, someone's got it. Dr. Buster's straight on it. We have the glowing lamppost. How dare you take my idea before I get a chance. Right, in the trailer, I remember this shot. We have a glowing, dematerializing lamppost. Some sort of weird supernatural thing. And what is it outside of? It is outside of a country pub. What is this? It's a it's the sign of a pub. It's like a pub sign. 
and it's in the country, trees in the background, and it's snowing. I think this is a pub on Ruby Road. I think this is somewhere near the church, somewhere related to that. We've got the snow, which we can also see in that shot there. We can see the snow falling down, the screen glitching, and this sort of dematerializing um, uh, lamppost. Now, my very strange conspiracy theory for this lamppost was the following and this is probably not going to be true but this is what i think is the case potentially maybe who knows i think that this could be a tardis in this one shot it's dematerializing in the very same sort of way a tardis would it's sort of phasing in and out right and it has a bright blue light as does our current tardis it could be a TARDIS with a working materialization circuit, but it's a very suspicious looking shot. Now, either it's one of two things. I think it might not be a TARDIS. I think it could also be some sort of simulation type thing. We've got the screen wobbling a bit, a little bit of glitching going on here. Um, and obviously the screen is entirely blue, so that's a bit weird. But the lamp is slowly disappearing and reappearing, like the TARDIS does when it dematerializes, which I think is kind of interesting. Um... Oh, that's fantastic from Apple Stone Productions. We've got a good theory there. Maybe the pub is 73 yards from the church. I think very much so. We have a pub in the background here, a little country pub. And it looks like as well, and I can't really be sure because it's a very, very brief shot, but it looks like they've got some lit up Christmas trees down here on the doorstep. So we're saying this could take place at Christmas. We can see snow falling down. We can see a pub and it's in the country with trees in the background, just like the church on Ruby Road, ladies and gents. I think this is going to be one of those law based stories where we're getting a little bit more information on Ruby's backstory. There was a lot of rumours about the snow following them around. And the snow is very prevalent in this teaser. We have this sort of broken tree effect. A sort of country pub, 73 yards. Don't know what we can see in the background. Not very much. But we can see a little house here. Maybe a pub. Um, very interesting. We can hear a crow as well. Very similar to that of the um, face of raven. Uh, crow, raven, same fucking thing. Um... But we have that shot, and then obviously we've got this sort of Church on Ruby Road sort of thing here. But I think there's going to be a loop round to Christmas here. We did talk about the um, the theme of snow. A hundred people watching now as well, by the way. I want to just say a quick, huge, enormous thank you to everyone who's checking in this out and watching today. Um, it really, really means a lot. Um, and I, I love talking about Doctor Who breaking stuff down, so this is really cool and exciting. Um, snow is a theme throughout this series as you can see from the trailer um there are a few shots you might have missed where snow is falling is snow falling in that last shot um there's something falling probably not snow but something um we have more shots though that are quite important here another shot from i believe the finale um that's what we broke down last time um and you can see snow falling all around ruby oh fairies will definitely have more than me i i I'm a no one anymore. Um, we've got snow falling around Ruby here. Um, we've got snow as a sort of constant theme. We had snow just in that previous shot there that I showed, I believe. This one here. Snow falling down in this chamber here. Uh, as you can see, Shooty is wearing his outfit from the unit finale. So that's interesting. So I'm saying snow was around when Ruby was dropped off outside the church. It was snowing, it was Christmas. Snow was a very clear theme in that. We've got snow in the background of that shot from the finale. We've got snow in that shot, also other shot of the finale with Ruby walking through it. Um, <clears throat> there was also one more, <clears throat> which I'm trying to find. I don't want to get copyrighted for this. Please don't copyright me, BBC. I'm trying to break down your trailer and give it some interest. <laughs> um, where the hell was it? There was a there was a scene of them two in sort of like gym gear. Oh no! I'm trying to remember where the hell it was. Ah, there it was. I saw it. Was it before that? Oh, here, here, here we go. Bloody hell. We've got um, the, the way they're wearing their sort of exercise gym outfit sort of stuff. And we can see snow falling down inside somewhere. 
So what my point is, is basically um, the snow seems to be something to do with Ruby, something to do with her being dropped off, something to do with her heritage. And we have an episode here called 73 Yards in the sort of country. Snow is a key part. I mean, these teasers aren't showing much information, right? They're showing the basic essentials. Space Baby shows us a space ship, baby's monster. That's the key of the episode. Devil's Chord. Music, piano in the background, and something there. And boom, I mean, it's very self-explanatory. But with this, the, what we're getting is this pub, and we're getting snow. There's a pub in the trailer with that sort of dematerializing lamppost, and snow is a consistent theme throughout. Oh, looks like dust. Could be dust, but it, it it's this sort of idea that, okay, if, if, it's, if it's inside, it can't be snow, but if it's some sort of supernatural kind of snow or something... I'm using snow as like a theme here, like a general thing of whenever we see snow, it's something to do with Ruby's heritage. Um, so maybe that's something to do with that. I'm not sure. But there is that dust cloud in the trailer as well. I don't know. That's what theorizing for is, ladies and gents. I have no idea, really. Um, but yeah. Creation of the Great Intelligence. That's interesting. Interesting one. Um, this is the first title to have the number since 42. Power of three? Orphan something something that I can't remember. Orphan... What is it called? Orphan something something. Orphan 37, is that it? I can't bloody remember. Um, often, <laughs> often fifty-five. That's it. <laughs> um, hasn't this episode been described as one of Russell's best? I don't know that, to be honest. I don't know if that's been said anywhere um, that I'm aware of. And Russell Davis in his Instagram post mentioned a very specific distance, seventy-three yards. I also don't think seventy-three yards is the name of the pub. I think this is a graphic for the for the um, opening. Um, Hmm. Interesting. Seventy three yards. Um, one of the best in Doctor Who magazine. Interesting. Um, so on BBC One, Radio One last year, the episode four is some of his best work ever. Oh, I'm so excited for 73 yards then. That's going to be good. If, that's, if Russell's saying that's some of his best work, then I'm buzzing. I'm so excited with that. This is episode four, so we've got four more to go. I have been streaming for an hour and a half. This is going to be a three-hour stream, isn't it? Ah! <laughs> um... But let's go! <laughs> we'll do something, I'm sure. Um, so, yeah, for those sticking around, um, again, I'm just going to do a little... For those who have watched my streams every week, I am really sorry that I keep promoting the other stuff that I'm working on. I just kind of want to see what... Uh, just want to get it, get the word out there about the projects that I'm working on, that I'm passionate about, that I want people to check out. So we're going to do a run-through of those. If this is your first time here... On one of these live streams for the Who Bulletin, if that's a new word for you, we stream pretty much every single Tuesday from 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock uh, UK time. A little hour news bulletin for Doctor Who every single week, whenever there is enough news to talk about. Um, and we do that here on YouTube, so you can keep an eye on that. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe. Notifications on to find out what's going on. Um, and then, of course, after 
the Who Bulletin every Tuesday from 8 o'clock till about 10 o'clock-ish on every Tuesday night. We also live stream over on Twitch, so we go and play some video games over on Twitch. So if you are interested in that, we really appreciate you checking that out. All these are linked in the description, by the way, so again, really, really appreciate if you check these on. Um, and... Yeah, and beyond that, um, we also have a podcast, which I know I keep talking about, but again, I want to just get out there because it's something I'm really excited about and really passionate about. Um, it's called Nostalgia Bait. It's a, pretty much a new podcast. We're about seven episodes in, seven weeks in, and we're just looking to get the word out there as much as possible. So if you haven't already checked it out, it is available on YouTube, but it's also on Spotify, Apple Music, um, Amazon Podcasts, all that sort of stuff. Um, we talk about film, TV pretty much anything we want and Doctor Who uh, the Doctor Who episode is on its way very very soon obviously with the new series coming out we're going to have a couple of Doctor Who episodes here and there and obviously that's just going to be a lot of fun um what have you thought of streaming before each episode airs um it really depends honestly like this this weekend I've just happened to not have anything on so I'm happy to do a stream but um to be honest, uh, most weekends are quite busy for me, so I don't usually get the time to do that. Um, so we'll have to just wait and see when the actual show starts coming out. But I might start doing reviews again, I really don't know. I'll have to let you know. Um, but yes, we'd really appreciate it if you go and check out um, the podcast, Nostalgia Bait. Um, again, something that I work very hard on. We have brand new episodes every single Thursday. We've got ones on Westworld, Five Nights at Freddy's, Spider-Man, Newcastle, the Oscar film nominations, uh, Star Wars, and then just sort of general stuff. Um, I co-host it with my friend Cooper, who actually helped me with a lot of old Doctor Who content um, that I used to do on my channel, which I'll show you now, actually. A little bit of a throwback. Um, we did a, a Day of the Doctor review thing together. So he helped me film these. He basically directed them on my behalf. Uh, you might remember this. This was when? Five years ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> Almost six years ago. We did, like, these little review, edit, skip things. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, Cooper was basically the guy behind the scenes on this. So he's my podcast co-host. We're going to be talking about these reviews at some point. We haven't done it properly yet, but it's coming up. We sort of want to salvage it for a, for a really good special occasion to talk about these things. Um but yeah, if you're interested about some of the content creation behind some of my older videos, or just sort of general opinions on uh, Doctor Who and all that sort of lovely stuff, then yeah, I'd really, really appreciate it if you check it out. We're really trying to get it off the ground. Um, so if you have a Spotify account, even if you just go over and follow it and never listen, I mean, I'd prefer you to listen, obviously, but if you do just want to drop us a follow, that would also be really appreciated. And of course, I love a little five-star rating as well, if I was being a bit cheeky. Um... But yeah, no, I'd really appreciate it if you check this out. I'd put it in the chat. You should be able to, you know, I feel like I'll pin it as well so you guys can uh, keep referring back to that. But yeah, would really, really appreciate you check that out. Give it a follow, all that sort of lovely stuff. And we will be talking about Doctor Who on there very soon. But yeah, let's talk about some of these older videos at some point. I mean, as I say, me and Cooper worked on these uh, as a collaborative piece. You don't see Cooper very often in these. Yeah, very occasionally you do. I think in this one, he does appear, actually, Cooper, as someone there he is <laughs> i managed to stick him in as hartnell um and i think in like the war council bit where he, yeah he's in a bald wig poor bastard <laughs> um so he was really heavily involved with this and he helped like basically direct and help like it filmed the whole bloody thing and you know it took a lot of meticulous planning because it's just three of me talking to each other um and there weren't many crossover shots but there was a couple like this sort of stuff um not that. This song, that sort of takes a little bit of planning. I was quite happy with that. I mean, the quality's a bit naff, but that's just the camera and that's just the time. But he helped me do that and he helped me do the Woman Who Fell to Earth one as well. Um, thank you so much for the uh, follow, Hoovy in Life. Anyone else who drops a follow on the podcast, let me know and I'll happily give you a big groveling shout out here. Oh, you figured out the digital footprint. Fuck off, Danny. <laughs> I never think about my digital footprint, ever. Um, and yeah, he helped me make this one as well, which came out 2018. Oh my god, that's six years ago almost. Oh my god, that's, that is scary, mind. Um... We filmed this one together as well, which just involved me pissing about and, and pretending to be Geordie and doing a really shit Yorkshire accent. Um, 
Oh my god. <laughs> but this sort of shit. Uh, but yeah. Let's talk about more episode titles! So, you guys are talking about the pub. So the pub is called uh, Yprin Mar, which is a, probably a terrible pronunciation of that Welsh, so I'm sorry to any Welsh people watching. Hope I haven't offended you too much. Um, and it that translates to tree on a hill, which is exactly what you can see in the actual um, advert for the uh, other little thing here. That is a tree, and it's on a hill, and that is the name of the pub, presumably. So that's interesting. Um, now we have the first four titles. How would you rank them from worst to best? Um, I might surprise you here. I might surprise you here. Um, so worst to best. Worst, 73 yards. Second worst space babies. Then boom. And then the devil's cord. Now, that's only because... Don't shoot me on that. I'm sure 73 yards will be a really interesting episode. I just... I don't like number titles. I just don't like titles with numbers in them. This is not me. Um, but yeah, 14 minutes till the next drop. Very, very excited. Ah! Um, yeah, obviously, do let me know. So, as well, I'm trying to think of ways to um, promote this podcast. I'm trying to think. If, if, uh, if you drop us a follow, we'll, um, I'll give you a big groveling shout out. Or maybe I'll do something silly. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, yeah, just trying to get people to be more aware of it and, and kind of... Yeah. Yes. But another one written by Russell T. Davis is interesting. I'm kind of hoping that... Um, I'm kind of hoping that we... Um, bump that up a little bit. 42 flashbacks. Yeah, Boom is very lame. I think Boom kind of hits the point. Like, it's an onomatopoeia. It's like, in your face, Boom. Like, that's... It kind of works in that sense. I don't think it's a very creative title. Like, The Devil's Chord sounds incredible. But I think it's... Uh, it hits the point. Like, Blink. You know? Um, same sort of vibe. Um, a Listen as well. Just followed. Thank you, Mr. Scarlo, for following the podcast. We really appreciate it. Hopefully, you have a listen to some episodes at some point. Hopefully, you enjoy it. Obviously, always willing to take in feedback and all that sort of thing. But thank you very much, Mr. Scarlo, for following Nostalgia Bay over on Spotify. Um, I wonder if we're going to have a stupidly long title in between all of these little uh, staccato ones. They're too... I can't actually read that. They're too small. Um... I could put them in my pocket. <laughs> Boom sounds that you couldn't make up anything, so you just thought of a basic word. I guess that's true, but I think sometimes it sort of hits, like, better to have a short, snappy title that you can remember. I'd rather have Boom than um, the Battle of Ranskorav Kolos, <laughs> for example. If I can fly, my window open. Um, the Rotting Tardis is in 73 yards. Do we have confirmation that the Rotting Tardis is in 73 yards? Do we have confirmation of that? It might well be. I just don't know if I believe that. It should have been Bosch. <laughs> oh, I, I must have missed that alternate 13th. I'm going to give him an even more groveling one if I missed it. Oh, thank you very much, alternate 13th. Very much appreciate that. Thank you very much for following the podcast. Really, again... Just helps us get the stats up, get some people listening. We made this great thing this morning, which I'm super proud of, actually. Um, I spent like a ridiculous amount of time editing this um, the other day. <laughs> this fucking thing. <laughs> I edited this on 20 string. This took so fucking long. Like, I had no idea. I had no, no idea. But, yeah, I spent a while editing that. And obviously... Big flashbacks to our wonderful Doctor Who Easter egg as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Set underscore DW just replied with this to someone who asked. Right. But based on what though? Because <laughs> I don't really classify someone on Twitter as like a source. 
And if someone's going, oh, my source told me this, then I also don't believe that. Um, I like Boom, very similar to Blink, very memorable. And I think it might be more creative when we watch the episode. Uh, what I did to have a Doctor Who episode called Sizzle. I feel that's like not too far-fetched at this rate. How much are they? I, I don't know. I wish they were real, these Easter eggs. <laughs> it's not the one, they? Um, 73 Yards is Dr. Light, as Shooty had Barbie press commitments during the filming block, I believe. Interesting. I hope episode 5 is a guest writer. I have a feeling that most of them are going to end up being... Um, are going to end up being Russell. For the first series, anyway. I feel that's a very Russell thing to do. And that's fine. Like, I think Russell's a great writer, and I think he, he comes up with a lot of good scripts. Um, let's have a look, actually, at uh, Doctor Who serials. And let's go through how many of each series Russell actually wrote. Because it's worth noting, like, Russell wrote 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 out of 13. 8 out of 13 in his first series. Uh, and then he wrote 1, 2... We're not going to count the specials. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 13 in his second series. Third series, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again. Um, and then 1... Two, three, four, five again. So it's interesting. You probably notice as, as well. And obviously, he wrote all the specials and stuff, right? Um, Stephen Moffat wrote one, two, three, four, five, six in his first series. One, two, three, four, five in his second series. One, two, three, four, and I guess five if you include the Christmas special. So the standard is about five episodes for thirteen. Now, in Russell's first series, he wrote one, two, three, four, five six seven eight and it's because it's his first series so i wouldn't be surprised if it is all russell the loki writers and moffat because in that that's what we have with the first series we have mark gatis for one rob shearman for one paul cornell for one stephen moffat for two but that's it you know we didn't have a, a wide variety and we've obviously got five less episodes than we had in series one of Doctor Who this year. So bear that in mind as well in terms of just general sort of work in it. Um, so I would just say, yeah, expect most of them to be Russell. It's his first series back. He wants to get it right. He wants to get it off the ground. Um, I'm absolutely fine with that, to be honest. A lot of people are going to have problems. They go, why couldn't you get guest writers? Why couldn't you get this? Why couldn't you get that? But I actually think that Russell writing it, a lot of them is actually a pretty good idea. Um, and I'm game for it, to be honest with you. I'm, I think it's a great idea. Because you want to have control over it. If I was bringing Doctor Who back after a few years of it not being up there. Look, look, Jodie's era was great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about the quality of the actual show. I'm talking about the popularity and notoriety in the public eye. Hasn't been at what it was. If I was taking over like Russell's job now, you'd want creative control over your first series. You know, you can trust yourself and you can trust a few people. But Moffat, example, like Stephen Moffat is an established writer for Doctor Who. He's good at it. Great idea to bring him back. Um... I, you know, just just take a seat back and think as well. Like, we're going to have episodes written by Russell T. fucking Davis and Stephen Moffat again in Doctor Who. I mean, that's just incredible. And also Chibnall Moffat, apparently, one of them as well. So that's even better. I know people say it's like, we, we only get one new talent this year. But I feel like, as, dis yeah, as disappointing as that is, it's sort of like... We'll probably see more in the next season, surely. We know how fast they're cranking out scripts. There's no way Russell's writing every episode of the, ne the next series. I have a feeling that the first season is going to be mostly Russell, and then season two, Russell will write less of them. We know that Russell might not even be writing the Christmas special. It might be Moffat, so that's interesting in itself. And I know that's like a bit annoying, and I think Chibnall had a really great diversity with his... Um, writing team and a lot of different <clears throat> styles and a lot of different great people who are really talented in that field um joy wilkinson vinay patel um pete mcteague as well who else do we have who else do we have mallory blackman wrote an episode which is incredible um <clears throat> so that is great people are thinking episode five is gonna be called albion four writers other than him and that's eight episodes so that's pretty good i'm not gonna lie that's pretty solid um <clears throat> but yeah my point is it's basically like I, I feel like yeah it's a bit of a shame after that having so much great diversity with the writing team but i think actually maybe the best idea maxine elderton as well who's excellent 
Uh, she wrote for Series 12, didn't she? Um, Haunting of Villa Diodati. She was a, um, a script editor in Series 11 and prior. And um, I think was brought on as an actual writer for one of the episodes. Uh, Haunting of Villa Diodati, which is excellent. And then Village of the Angels, which is excellent as well. So, yeah, a great shout. She does need to come back. She's a great writer. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Intriguing. We've got four more minutes until the new title comes out. <clears throat> new talent is great, but having a team of experienced writers is usually a good indicator of quality. A lot of Russell T. Davis' era was written by folk who were already involved with Wilderness Who. Exactly. I think it's it's good to have new talent, absolutely. But I think when you're starting a new show, and especially for like guarantee in terms of Disney as well, for the Disney deal, I think it's not it's more unusual to have lots of different writers writing different episodes for a show that like you have I'm trying to think of like shows like Marvel shows like Marvel limited series is like they'll have different episodes written by different people but there will be a key writer or writing team who overlook the whole series and write most of the episodes and I think that's something to bear in mind like every episode of Stranger Things is written by the Duffer Brothers right it's not written by guest writers there's a couple that are written by guest writers but it's not the majority written by guest writers because there'd be a sort of lack of overall story there in terms of like understanding about what's going on. I should probably stop showing this trailer because it's going to get fucking copyright strike. Um, <clears throat> probably too late for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got another title coming in two minutes and 30 seconds. Get ready for another Doctor Who title. This is going to be episode five. A lot of people are predicting this is going to be called Albion. Um, we know that this is the one with the politic. Well, we don't know anything actually, but we're assuming this is the one with the politician um and the earth story kate stewart um and the big slug monsters so we'll have to wait and see exactly but that is the current working theory we have a few more minutes a second stream nuking what 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 are we talking about what are we talking about Minute and a half until the new title drops for episode 5 of season 1 of Doctor Who. If it's called Big Slugs, that will be my favourite Doctor Who episode of all time. Let me just make that clear. If it says the word slug in the title, I'm loving it. Live slug reaction. <laughs> Let's go. <clears throat> What this trailer is just the CGI shots they released but narrated by Ruby like what they did with Bill in series 10. I don't know. I don't feel like that's the kind of vibe they're going for but it would be cool. It would be something a bit different. I have a feeling that the trailer will just be a BBC one and not like a Disney Plus one. We had the Disney Plus one. That was really cool. But it's not the BBC who made that. Right. Three seconds. Two. One. I might have missed it by a couple of seconds there. Oh, have I, where have I missed a minute? Idiot. A minute early. What are we doing? Molten Slug. I love being part of the Doctor Who community. Who else gathers around to wait for episode title reveals and theorise about them like this? Exactly! That's the kind of community I love to see. And if you are new here, again, please do subscribe to the channel. Notifications on. We do tend to go live with the Who Bulletin every single Tuesday, talking about theories, news, reviews, all that sort of thing. And if you subscribe now for the first time, your name will appear on the screen with a little TARDIS, I think. I think. Um, about 20 seconds until the new title reveal. Ruby and Kate will be together for some scenes. I expect Mel will also feature in this unit episode and pair up with the Doctor to investigate Albion together. Let's go. 10 seconds. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. New title reveal. No. Bollocks. Hang on. Slightly early. Dot and Bubble. <laughs> That's an interesting... What the fuck is that? <laughs> Written by Russell T. Davis, directed by Dylan Holmes Williams. Definitely not a two-parter, because that is not the same vibe. That is so strange. That is so strange. I don't understand. I don't know what... The... This, you know what it's given me? It's given me Black Mirror. But I have absolutely zero theories in that. But let's have a look. Um... In the background, we've got people in sort of blue costumes, light, bright coloured costumes. It's sort of got like a neo-future vibe. Um, 
Dot and Bubble. I have no idea. I have no idea. Dot and Bubble. Nothing? Not a clue. That's that. This is you know what the skit. Look, I I don't want to curse it, but I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna curse it. <laughs> Saranga conundrum vibes. <laughs> Morse code? What do you mean Morse code? This definitely feels like a Black Mirror one. Social media kind of thing. Bubble universe, dot and bubble. Some, what Morse code? We'll do the Morse code, but I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to... That's just three dots. That's just three dots for when the things come on screen. I don't think that's anything to do with Morse code, is it? I don't think that means anything, does it? <laughs> Definitely getting Black Mirror vibes. Welcome, just Alexa. Tom Coates as well. Welcome to the stream. Um, Doc Cotton in, yeah. Doc Cotton serving Bubble and Squeak. That's what this episode's going to be. Um, also, Russell T. Davis, Ellipses, Bells of St. John, Part 2. Many Gibson said the most recent episode, of, uh, most recent Doctor Who magazine, uh, that there is an episode like Black Mirror. So maybe this one. Interesting. I, I do think this is giving me Black Mirror vibes. It's giving me Black Mirror episodes. What is it giving me vibes of? It's giving me vibes of nosedive. It's giving me nosedive vibes. Remember this one? The social media Black Mirror episode? It's giving me this sort of vibes, right? Because of the colour scheme as well. Very light, bright, um, like pastel colours. That's what I'm getting from the people in the background here as well. We can see bright sort of blue pastel colours. Um, social media sort of thing, definitely. You've got people smiling by the looks of it. Dot and bubble, some sort of digital thing, um, computer simulation, social... I think it's a social media Black mirror -y episode, 100%. 100%. No, I, I like the Black Mirror vibes. That makes me happy. I think it's given me that. It's probably the cheesiest one I've seen yet. Like, all of these are really cool, like, animatics. This one's a little bit like... Fine, but if that you know, imagine if that said writer Charlie Brooker. Oh, <laughs> God, I'd love it. I'd love it so much. I'd absolutely adore it. Um, but yeah, it's giving me, it's giving me Black Mirror vibes. Give me Black Mirror nose dive vibes. You know what else is giving me off? This is going to be really niche. But Red Dwarf season twelve. It was M Core. It's giving me M M Core vibes from Red Dwarf. Big sort of uh, corporate thing episode where they've got loads of like products and corporate-y sort of stuff. Very bright, futuristic, bright sort of thing. That's what it's giving me vibes of. So there's my two, they're my, they're my two takes. But I'll be honest with you, not a clue. Not a clue. Let's have a look in the actual trailer. Let's see if we've got anything to do with this episode. Presumably something, right? Um, maybe the slugs? Um... No live slug reaction? No. This YouTube thing used to be a lot more efficient. You used to be able to see a lot more from this preview window. Oh, kablam a little bit as well. <laughs> Sweep of the slugs. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure where the, the slug bit is in the trailer. It's kind of annoying because I feel like it's not... Jump forward five seconds at a time. It's not very helpful, is it? 
Um, yeah, that's what that's what I'm thinking. There's there's the university person who's in the trailer, the girl with the sort of purple outfit on. Um, she's a uh, yeah, she's giving sort of that same vibe, and it's the slug episode. Here, here, here. Ah, there we go. Got it. So this is the slug episode. There's a girl wearing bright pastel colours here, and I wonder if that's to do with anything here. Can we see anyone in that sort of outfit? She's wearing like purple pastel, pink headband. Can we see anyone in this? Which looks like that. Not really. See someone in like a blazer. No, not really. A lot of people wearing like a sort of bluey sort of um, uh, bright blue pastely colour on them. I'm not really too sure to be honest with you. Um, but that is very interesting. I'm excited about that though. I mean, it's 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 weird because I'm sort of like not like that. Eh. It's a cool title, Dot and Bubble, because it doesn't tell you anything. Um, prefer it, the title to Seventy Three Yards, even though I think the yeah, episode Seventy Three Yards will probably be better. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but that is four out of five episodes written by Russell C. Davis so far. Um, interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, I haven't actually got much to say about that. I haven't got much to break down about that, to be honest with you. Um, there's not really too much I want to say about that. Um, she gets gobbled up by the slug. Could be. Yeah. Nigel Stockley, welcome. Okay, I'll tell you all the titles, Nigel. They're all on the, uh, the Doctor Who Twitter, but episode one is called Space Babies. Episode two is The Devil's Court. Episode three is called Boom. Episode four is called 73 Yards. Episode five is called Dot and Bubble. Um, all of them, bar Boom, are written by Russell T. Davis. Boom is written by Stephen Moffat. So Boom is the Moffat episode. It was rumoured, and it is there. Dot and Bubble is the only one I've not heard anything of prior. But some people seem to know. Some people seem to know. Um, I'd love it to be, um, I'd love it to be like a sort of dating app kind of thing. I'd love it to be like sort of a social media -y dating app kind of vibe. That would be kind of funny. I could see that working quite well. Um, but yeah, interesting. Devil's Chord is the only one I like. Yeah, I like Devil's Chord. Devil's Chord is a great one. Space Babies is okay. Boom is, I think, solid. 73 Yards is interesting, but I don't like my numbers. What are the rumours for the Yard 73 episodes? So 73 Yards, um, the promo has the pub sign and it has snow. And what we talked about before was, um, in case you missed it, in the trailer there are shots of a sort of like glitching street lamp outside of a country pub. There's also snow, which would lead you to believe that's part of the overarching theme. I think 73 Yards is going to be more of a story arc story for, for Ruby Sunday. Um, might be involved with directly how she was left at the church. We know it's outside in the country. Um, the snow snow coming down could be in the same little village uh, maybe even on Ruby Road itself so yeah keep an eye out for that I think the next one is the Regency one Regency episode is number six so that's gonna be the one with the time agent and all that sort of thing we can talk a lot more about that one when that one comes out but um yeah keep an eye out for now um but yeah Um, but yeah, Pride and Prejudice and Time Lords, that's the next sort of one. Thurman Locations on Twitter has suggested that the bubble part of the title may suggest a society where people literally live in their own bubbles and own individual realities. So, uh, uh, rant time, rant time. <laughs> um, I love the passion from some accounts, and they might have some pretty good insights into things i just don't trust 
some random Twitter account when it comes to like official sources for episodes. It's a nice theory at that. Um, Doctor Who production news and the filming location accounts and stuff. It's like just because they've seen filming, it, it, you don't know what's going on in the story. It's hard to give like a direct jump as to this is what's going to happen. This is exactly how it's going to go. So I, 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 yeah, don't use Twitter accounts as sort of sources for information. I never do. I think it's sort of it, it, it basically helps peddle uh, misinformation and. As much as I know, sometimes it's done all in sort of good spirit. I, I I just think it's really fucking annoying as someone who used to talk about leaks and rumors and news and filming location stuff. It fucking annoyed me because I would try to get stuff accurate and it would be like really annoying. Percy the Cat sort of stuff. Anyone who's coming and going, I've, got a, I've actually got a source that says this. They might be right. But chances are they're fucking not. <laughs> Let's be fair. Um, yeah. I think, we'll, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Um, we'll talk about the Regency episode when we get that title revealed in 20 minutes. So we'll talk about that when it, when it comes to it. Um, on the topic of, like, Twitter accounts, I know a lot of people... Um, a lot of people were talking about this, and I saw this come up yesterday, and it fucking annoyed me, because it's already got, like, 300 followers um, and a shit ton of likes. And it's fair game, right? This is not an official Doctor Who account, guys. Can we not do this again? Like, this is... Look... I, I love the enthusiasm. Whoever created this, top marks. Like, you've done a really, really good job there because you've got everything pretty much spot on. You've got the whole format thing here. You're talking about the trailer, which is kind of an easy, obviously, an easy jump to. Um, you're following just the BBC accounts and all that sort of thing. Um, but it's not followed by any official BBC accounts. You know? And as amazing as an idea it would be to have triad technology as part of a thing, this is clearly not designed by the BBC. As great as it is, um, this this font face and everything, it's, it's... No, it's probably not an official account. And that's, like, amazing. Like, obviously, like, good, good for you, you know, go off king, like, or queen. But just... It just annoys me because people fall for it. And I'm, I'm not annoyed at the person making this account at all. I think that's you know, good for you. Go for it. Um, absolutely. Just someone trying to get a few followers off, off the back of a trailer coming out and, and doing like a sort of spin-off official account in universe of the show. That's really cool. It's a great idea. Um, it works with a lot of other big brands and the, when they do official sort of spin-off accounts, like when they sort of like have a meme sort of intern. Um, it's clearly fake. So don't... Stop believing stuff like this, you know what I mean? It's like, fair play to the guy who's doing it, good for you. But if you're, like, looking at this and going, oh my god, I'm going to follow this account, it's going to be, like, incredible. No, again, no, not slagging off anyone who has followed it, but it's probably not real, is it? It's probably not. I don't follow Big Finish? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't, I don't listen to Big Finish. Look, you... <laughs> I just wanted to call me out on that. I just don't listen to Big Finish. I just don't listen to it. Like, it's all well and good. I, I, I just don't listen to Big Finish. I, I can, I've barely watched enough Classic Who. I, I don't need to be starting listening to audio stories as well. Like, so the ones I've listened to are really good. I've loved them. I do... I, I just don't care about keeping up to date with Big Finish because I don't buy their new products. So, I'll see them. I'll see... The, the good ones will get retweeted and shared, and I'll get to see it. But it is very much the same sort of format of trailer, 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 announcement, trailer, 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 announcement. And I'll see them when people retweet them and stuff anyway. So I've not really got, like, that uh, that much of a thing to be following Big Finish, you know? Um, oh, Cult Box have accidentally leaked the title list early. Well, that's great, isn't it? Nice one, Cult Box. Ruin the fucking fun for everyone, dickheads. So if you're watching the stream, obviously, I'm assuming someone will fucking leak it anyway. Please don't do that. Don't go and check Cult Box. If that is true, I... Like, boo to them for, like, doing that. It just ruins the whole, like, rollout of these titles. Like, awful. Um... What's your least favourite episode title ever? Oh, God. Well, Battle of Ranscore of Carlos is up there. That's just appalling. It's hard to remember. It's a made-up word. It doesn't stick in the memory very well. So we got we got a Mr. Tardis a big finish. <laughs> Look, I 
I, I think it's great. For, for me, the problem with Big Finish is that I think... And this is a hot take. I love what it does for people who want to follow the wider story. People are like, I want to see this character meet this character, and I want a really cool story off the back of it. I think that's great, and people get an amazing fix out of that. And I think for Doctor Who, it's incredible. It kept the show alive during... Um, it kept the show alive during the wilderness era um it kept that those stories going and i think big finish for that is incredible for me personally i'm not an audiobook kind of guy um i kind of i'm not an audiobook kind of guy i'm also not keen on their their release format right i feel like their ideas for stories consist of what if this character meet this character and like there's some amazing stuff but also, I just don't care for it. Like, my example is, like, when David Tennant came back to the show for the 60th anniversary, it wasn't as exciting because he's done about 100 different Big Finish stories. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if, if Chris Eccleston came back to the show now, it would be unreal. It would be so exciting. It would be amazing. Would it be more or less exciting if he hadn't done five or six Big Finish box sets before? I'd say it would be more if he hadn't done that. That's personally how I see it, right? I think... But that that's just, uh, for me, it's about excitement and it's about overdoing characters. I don't need to see River Song meet every Doctor and every character. I don't need to see Jackie Tyler meet every character just because they want to keep, like, that actress on the payroll. That's fine. Again, if that's what people want to see, that's great. For me, like, I have no desire to see those stories. Um, it's kind of just like Jackie Tyler meets uh, the Zarbi, um, meets River Song, meets the Sixth Doctor. Cool. And... I think that was great, and I think like it, you, can, you can. There's elements in there, and sometimes you get stories which are absolute corkers. I've heard the Eleventh uh, Doctor Chronicles are excellent, and I'm sure they are doing something with the Paradigm Daleks, really exploring a gap in the in the actual show. If there's a gap in the show that needs filling, let's do it. You know, if there's a time period in the show which is really interesting, I. But you know, like if you're going to do an Eleventh Doctor Eleventh Doctor box set, as boring as it might be, I'd love to see some stories from Trends a lot. I'd love to see some like a gap in the show where the Doctor has been for a long time and could do something with and have some fun with, um, make that a bigger event in retrospect. Do what the Clone Wars does to the Star Wars prequels. It expands the lore, makes it more interesting. I think there's a lot of big finish which does just fall into the gap of the Ninth Doctor meets the Cybermen, the Ninth Doctor meets the Sontarans, the Ninth Doctor meets the Brigadier, the Ninth Doctor meets River Song, the Ninth Doctor meets Kate Stewart. It's like, okay... It, oh, did we just get Chris Eccleston back to meet all the things that he hasn't met in the show? Or did we get it to do like interesting and new and exciting stories? Now, there might be some great stories in there. I haven't seen it. I'm just seeing how it feels like and what puts me off about it. And on top of that, it's expensive. Even if you get the digital downloads, you're still paying like 20 quid a box set. And there's like a new one every month, isn't there? Or like a, a two new every month. I don't know how many there are, but they seem to announce them like it's going out of fashion. So that's my other thing, is if I want to keep on top of it, it's either all or nothing for me. I either want to know everything that's going on in the world of Big Finish or nothing. And I'm more of a nothing guy because I physically can't afford to keep up with the sheer amount of content that they're releasing. If it was a once a month thing, I think it would probably be more viable for me as like a thing to keep on top of. But there's just no way of being able to listen and take in all of it. And again, I'm not an audiobook guy, so it just it, for me it's not there. So don't, that's my, that's my gripe with Big Finish. I think it's excellent for people who love that format and want to see those stories, and I think it's great. For me, I'm more of a physical media kind of guy in terms of, like, TV, um, like, moving picture. I like TV, I like film, I like spin-offs or animations, all that sort of thing. I love that. Not a big audio story guy, but, hey, it's cool. <clears throat> um... Uh, that's the thing is I think people think it's like oh I'm a Doctor Who fan I'm a Doctor Who YouTuber but I don't listen to Big Finish that's like a travesty but it's it's pretty fucking normal like I just don't um Big Finish just seems like a pain in the ass and pretty mid format um well, I just meant to sit there and listen I need that visual hook for my focus I think audio stories can work like I've read audio books like I've, I've listened to like the shining audiobook and it's excellent it's a fantastic story but I think because it's there's so much of it and it's all acted it's brilliant and I think for Paul McGann it's excellent because he can actually expand his doctor's law and do more with that character. and that's great and I love that I just don't like I think it's like for me I only want to see a story that's worth telling right there's a rumor that there's going to be a, a spin-off with the sea devils it's going to be apparently a limited series, 
um, called The War Between Land and Sea, and apparently they're filming it this year. Now, that could be complete bullshit, but let's say that is true. A limited series, six to eight episodes maybe, and that's it. No series two, no series three, just a limited series, limited run of six to eight episodes, right? Now, the reason that excites me more than a unit spin-off, or Torchwood again, is because it feels like that is absolutely insane. Why would they do a spin-off of the Sea Devils? That doesn't make any sense. The reason I like it, and the reason it excites me, is because it doesn't make sense. And it's one of those things that makes you go, if they're doing this, there must be a story worth telling. Whereas with Big Finish, I feel like there are some stories worth telling. The War Master, brilliant example. Listen to two of those box sets, and I think they're brilliant. Jer- Derek Jacobi's excellent, and they're all brilliant. But... With other stuff, it's like Jackie Tyler meets this character, River Song meets every Doctor ever and every monster ever because they want to keep Alex Kingston on the payroll. Great, sure. But for me, it's like some of those don't seem like stories worth telling. Especially not worth, like, 20 quid, 30 quid a box set. You know what I mean? As opposed to going on BBC iPlayer and watching a Doctor Who spin-off. You know, I just... I think it's a lot. If, B- if Big Finish did like a subscription service, like Big Finish Plus, you do you subscribe and you can listen to all of their box sets on, on a website for free and you pay a monthly subscription, that would be a really great way to get people into your uh, audio stories. At the minute, it's too difficult to catch up with everything and pay for everything. 20 quid, 30 quid a box set is madness. That's my gripe with Big Finish. And yeah, I'm excited for the, the war between land and sea, the Sea Devil spin-off, because again, as I said, it's something that like, I don't know. I, I just, I'm, ex- I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. For that. Um, the first 50 main range of free on Spotify. Yeah. I don't know. And that's great. And I like that. And that's, that is simply down to me not having the time or interest in audio stories to go and listen to it. There's a lot of classic Doctor Who I've never seen. So why would I prioritize the, the audio stories unless I just wanted to sit there? And I might do. I've got, I, I, have, I have a desk job at work. I can listen to music. I can listen to audio stories. I probably might at some point. But for me, it's like, it's not about that. It's like, it's more of the the stuff that's like being released now that I have more of a problem with. The old Big Finish stuff is excellent. All the Wilderness Year stuff, amazing. Um, yeah. Hmm. The Fugitive Doctor and Sasha to one sets again, yeah. To get listen to Redacted, I did listen to a bit of Redacted. I did. I didn't finish it though. Again, it's like I can't. I couldn't really get into the format, but I. I think it was good. Yeah, big finish. But I do like the format. I have to be in the right mood for it. However, I'll probably get the Fugitive Doctor and the Saturday One sets again. Great idea. Personally, I won't because I just I, unless it's really, really good and you have to listen to it to find out all this stuff. It's like I don't really mind that much. I listened to the first half, but never got to finishing Redacted. So good. Um, Watch it. Started watching Westworld last night after listening to the pod. Loving it so far. Adam Grattan, thank you so, so much for that. Um, obviously, that's our intention, is to get people listening to the podcast and then also find new things through it. And Westworld is a show that I fucking love and I will gas up to the end of, ti- uh, to the end of time uh, or to the nth degree, either of them. Um, our latest episode, for context, guys, on the podcast was talking about Westworld and me guessing it up. So it's great to see that you people are watching it off the back of it and enjoying it. It's a great show, and it deserves to be enjoyed. So I'm really, really glad to hear that, Adam. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, so Cold Box apparently has the first six episode titles attributed on their... Looking at their trailer breakdown, last week's images seems to have the titles. Uh, theoretically, I know what episode six is called, and the finale remains a mystery. Yeah, don't tell me what episode 6 is called yet. We're going to find out in five minutes anyway. I'd rather just sort of see it. Um, a Doctor Who spin-off in the style of Star Wars Visions is really what I want from this new era. I think that would be cool, but I'm as a Star Wars fan, I don't really like Star Wars Visions that much, and that's just because it's outside of the canon. But I love the idea of it. I just haven't watched it because I, I just, it, would, it messes my brain too much. For me, I love this the thing about Star Wars. It's like one timeline 
on like across this universe and you can do it with doctor who you can't do that because it's time travel so visions would absolutely work for doctor who and it could be canon it'd be great but for me like a non-canon star wars show it's like well it just kind of yeah the appeal of star wars for me is it all takes place and all comes together at different points in that timeline um oh my god the roswell one as well that's ep- is that episode seven? Oh, i forgot about that I forgot about that. But there's nothing really in the trailer that would suggest like a Roswell episode from what I've seen. So maybe it's one we haven't seen much of yet. Um, it's going to be wondering, have you seen The Newsroom? I know a lot of people haven't. And it's honestly one of the best shows I've ever made. I've not seen that, but I'll have a look into it. I've listened to series one, of redacted and enjoyed it, but never listened to season two. Thanks for not spoiling Alternate 13th. You're a star. You are a star. I'm going to quickly get another drink before this episode title drops and I'll be back in one minute. Keep yourselves entertained. I'm sure you can manage it. He's back. Fucking hell, let's go. New episode title in less than two minutes, ladies and gentlemen. No, you're not taking over. Fuck you guys. Um, I also rewatched Wild Blue Yonder. Missed that. Um, yesterday, and my god, watching it out of the context of the 60th really improved it for me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wild Blue Yonder is an incredible episode. You know what I loved so much when I first watched that episode? Um, I missed it on broadcast because I was actually busy that evening. So I didn't get to watch it. So I did watch it, typically enough with the new Doctor Who release schedule. I actually watched Wild Blue Yonder about two o'clock in the morning before I went to bed. And I watched it on my on a projector from lying in bed. And it was one of the best experiences I've ever had watching Doctor Who. I was like, this is the best episode to watch, like, in the middle of the night for the first time, projector, not knowing what's going on. I loved it. Um... What about the books or novelizations? I love the novelizations. I think they're great. I think they expand the story that is already there, which it, for me creates intrigue. Um, I love the Day of the Doctor one. I love the Rose one. I'm, I'm a little bit through Dalek, but I sort of gave it up because I was quite busy at the time. Um, but yeah. Look out for Bubble and Spot. Um, Rusty Davis said to Babble for Archives to look out for Bubble and Spot if they liked Wild Blue Yonder. Interesting. That's going to be a Wild Blue Yonder vibe. That is fucking cool. I thought I was going to be like, are you swearing videos now? But I've got to say, I really like it. I I feel like it's one of those things that it's more me. When I was younger, I was like, I want to be very careful about my image online. And I still do. But I think nowadays it's sort of people don't care as much about swearing. It's not as a taboo thing. And I think actually, this is just me. And I'm just talking and being honest about things. Anyway, new Doctor Who title announced right now. Rogue. Or Rouge. Is it Rogue? Hosted by the Duchess of Pemberton. Rogue. Um, Is it Rogue or Rouge? Am I getting it wrong? (laughs) 8th of May, 1813. 
Order of Dancing, Lord Adams, Lord Alex, Lord Edward, and something Smith. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, I love this as the Regency one. Yes. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? What? You missed it. I missed what? Since Christmas it's been there. What do you mean? What do you mean I missed it? I'm so confused. <laughs> Rogue. No, 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 I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Don't you worry. Um, super interesting. So Rouge or Rogue. Oh, for fuck's sake. Is it Rogue? <laughs> I think it's Rogue, isn't it? Because it's like... Rogue 1 is... Right, yeah. Whereas... Mulan... No, not Molon. Mulan Rouge, you spelled like that. So it's Rogue. Fucking hell. I'm, I'm being a right dick today. <laughs> I wasn't on the dock because I was getting a drink and I forgot. I had, my problem was I had the wrong screen on. Um, so this is the Regency episode. It's written by Kate Heron uh, and Brian Redmond. So this is the uh, same Kate Heron who directed season one of Loki, which is really cool. And I and I love that. Um, so I'm very excited to see what she's going to bring to Doctor Who. Loki was excellent. So I'm 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 really excited to see what she's going to bring to this. Um, Rogue One is not your least favorite Star Wars film, Ultimate Thirty. Get out of the gutter! Come on. Um, yeah, Rogue. This is the Regency episode. So let's talk about that. Let's stop waffling. The Regency episode. This is probably the one we know most about, to be honest. Uh, and also, there's the most theorizing going on. So the Ro um, the Regency episode, as you can see, is this one where people turn into birds. <laughs> um, this kind of reminds me of the uh, cat people from series 2 and series 3 of Doctor Who from New Earth um, but these are sort of like shape-shifting uh, bird people maybe it's sort of like the human cover or maybe it's not but they have some sort of um, maybe it's like a peacocky vibe you know how peacocks kind of use their feathers to sort of as like a sort of um, kind of like a showy thing don't they um, this is kind of an interesting same sort of way I guess that it's uh, yeah, they, 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 it's cool. Um, but yeah, we've got the Regency episode. There's a lot of stuff we know about that in terms of like visuals. Uh, the Doctor and Ruby dancing there, of course. We've got a lot of stuff. Uh, I think at the beginning of the trailer, we have a shot of Shooty. Um, for, oh, yeah, oh, of course, this bloody shot, yeah. Um, so this is... Bird people a slug. A whole series of homage to the twin dilemma. <laughs> it reminds me more of Perry turning into a bird. Um, <laughs> we've got um, so Shooty here, obviously, um, in some sort of spaceship kind of situation. Um, let's go back to the first trailer so we can talk about that one first because I think there's a few things to break down in this. Um, mm, 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 mm. So here... What does he say there? I don't know what he says there, but... Sure. Um, he's dancing with Jonathan Groff's character and calls him a cad. Um, and then also has a point where I think he holds up a gun against uh, the Doctor as well. Oh, there's a better shot at the bogeyman from episode one, by the way. There you go. Um, there we go. We've got a shot of Jonathan Groff's character holding up a gun. Uh, a sort of quite spacey looking gun. Um, so there's been a lot of theories about this. And I talked about this last week on the Who Bulletin. So I'll kind of retread my ground. Um, I think it's a great theory that this guy is a young Captain Jack Harkness that's been recast. Um, so I'm kind of like, I like that theory. 
um, because I'm not a big fan of John Barrowman. <laughs> um, and also, this is the same episode. So we've got a character with a sort of spacey gun um, and then some sort of ship here. And as you can see in the background here, we've got Hammock. Um, so we're sort of thinking that maybe this is some sort of time agent kind of vibe. Very similar to Captain Jack Harkness's vibes from um, The Doctor Dances and The Empty Child. He has a little ship, but it's a very relaxing ship, a few martinis. You know, even in Series 12 when we saw Jack, he kind of talked about the spaceship that he's nicked and it didn't have a bar. He's got a very particular style to him. So the hammock and the kind of like um, junky kind of vibe aesthetic... Um, I kind of like got the David Tennant head here from I believe Waters of Mars. Um, it's probably going to be some sort of scan. Maybe this character is a time agent who is looking for that incarnation of the Doctor, but he's instead found Shooty, um, which is kind of cool. Um, or maybe it's just a scan which shows all the faces of the Doctor, and they've just used this one in the trailer. RTD wouldn't recast Barman though he is a friend. It's a good point. It's a good point. Um, but I don't know. I don't know that for sure. It's very likely that I, mean, I think we know pretty much that John Barman has been blacklisted from. Um, the BBC, I think, at the minute, or at least from Doctor Who, I, I believe that's the case. Based on what came out about him. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they do here. But if it's not Captain Jack, then it's a character who is... But, uh, Russell did say Jonathan Groff as who? What? If he's saying stuff like that, it's implying that Jonathan Groff is a returning character. Now, I'd like to see it not be Captain Jack. I'd like to be see it to be someone else that we don't know of or whatever. A regeneration of another Time Lord, maybe. Um, but it's someone who likes to use a gun. And... Sort of space gun. He's got a big blue coat, same as Captain Jack used to have. And I'm thinking a time agent. It's a time agent vibes. It's very much time agent vibes. But someone with a spacey gun who isn't involved with the whole bird transformation thing. Um, and obviously we're just going off what we know of in the series. Again, great shout from Dr. Master there to talking about um, like um, what was that again? What were we talking about? Um, Dr. Master mentioned there about Russell T. Davis saying that, uh, like, oh, Jonathan Groff is in this trip of playing who? What? Kind of implies that he's playing someone we already know, which is interesting. But it's one of those things that we just we just don't know. It could be it could be a completely new time agent. I feel like, but if the thing is, almost if you don't, it, you, you're sort of fucked either way. Because if you do Jack, then it's weird that it's sort of like a recast. But then if you don't do Jack and it's a time agent who wears a big blue coat and is kind of flirty with the Doctor and has his own sort of ship like this with a hammock, what have you. It's like so close to Jack that you may as well just do Jack again. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But I kind of like the idea of it being a time agent. Or maybe even someone else that we don't know of. It's probably not a Time Lord because it's not a TARDIS, clearly, is it? Um, but it's cool. I, you know, I, I, I like it, whatever it is. I'm very interested to see what Jonathan Groff's character is. I think Jonathan Groff is a great actor um, who is just, yeah, it's super interesting to see perform. I I love it. So I'm very excited to see what he's going to bring to this role, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, if they were going to do so, you know, you'd just look at, again, context in the real world of, of John Barrowman not being happy with Doctor Who and some news coming out last year that he wasn't happy with. A lot of people thought that was because Torchwood was being um, rejuvenated a little bit, but it turns out that that wasn't true because there's no plans to do that at the minute, apparently, according to Russell. Uh, but then we've got a character who's very, very like Captain Jack in this series, um, so a similar sort of vibe. I mean, Jonathan Groff is American. Um, he comes from a theater background. Um, he's a character who wears a big blue coat, has time agent, he vibes with a gun and he's kind of flirting with the doctor, dancing with him. The doctor calls him a cad. It's very close. It's very close to that of, of, of Captain Jack. Now, I don't know how I'd feel about that, but I kind of like the idea that this is Captain Jack before he knew the doctor. Do you know? Like an old, old version of Captain Jack before, like, is it a starting time agent or whatever? Maybe just way, way back when. It's not the first time we've seen Captain Jack recast as, like, a younger, you know, actor. Um, we've seen it in Torchwood before as, like, a sort of flashback. So it wouldn't be that far out of the question to have a younger actor playing a younger version of Captain Jack from before he met the Doctor in The Doctor Dances an Empty Child. Do you know what I mean? Like he has an aesthetic after Torchwood and all that sort of stuff and nowadays. But I think actually 
there's a there's a thrill to having a character like this. I just I just wonder if they'll do it. I don't know if they will. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm not saying that's what I think is going to happen. It's just an interesting theory, and I love talking about it because it's so cool. But also, yeah, that is the point. The one thing that would make me want this to be Captain Jack is I'd absolutely love to see John Byron losing his fucking mind over this. But I like to think that he did lose his mind about this, and he's now come to terms with it. And maybe when this happens, he'll have been asked to give his sort of blessing to Jonathan Groff as the new Captain Jack or something like that, if that is the case. Uh, I'm not, yeah, it's, it's not saying that this is Captain Jack now, after meeting Geordie and he shows up looking like this. This is like Captain Jack before he meets the Doctor. Do you know what I mean? But then why would he not know who the Doctor is before when you get to Impossible uh, Empty Child and um, the Doctor dances? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. But it's an interesting question, and like it's one that definitely interests me. I kind of hope that that's the case, simply because it's sort of interesting. I'd be interested if it was a time agent and it's a new character. Absolutely. But kind of doing a young Captain Jack, it's like, that's cool. Because you can introduce him to a new audience um, with, a, with a young, popular actor like Jonathan Groff, who has obviously appeared in Hamilton. Uh, amongst many other things, the new Matrix film he was in as the, like one of the villains. That's great. But Barman is playing a human, playing an immortal. Barman now looks way older. It's data from Star Trek all over again. Yeah, I think like with with Barrowman, he does obviously does look older. It's not that he can't play it anymore. It's that he's probably not <laughs> inclined to play it, given what has come out about him and given the BBC's kind of representation kind of thing. Um, Davis, uh, seems that the Regency episode, right? We're talking. Uh, are we combining premises? Yeah, we're talking about the theory that the Jonathan Groff character is a a young version of Captain Jack. Um, it's a theory that's been kind of going around. It's not one that I think is necessarily true but it's an interesting one to talk about that but yeah welcome to the stream thanks for joining once again um this is definitely the regency episode episode six uh, written by kate heron of course as well who directed the whole first season of loki uh very interesting indeed um probably the only big guest writing spot it's likely that the finale is going to be a two-parter episode seven and eight probably both going to be written by russell as well um i would be surprised if that wasn't the case but this is yeah interesting um it's set in 1813, so that's quite a while ago, and we've got a sort of time agent style character with a gun and a sort of ship with a hammock in it. Um, so that's the vibe we're getting and kind of working out off the back of that. A lot of people thinking that it could be a younger version of Captain Jack that's been recast given John Barman's recent escapades in the public eye. Um, do you think Jonathan Groff's character could be a recurring character for the next few seasons? I'd love that to be the case. I'd absolutely love that to be the case, but I, I don't know if it will be. We haven't seen him on set at all filming um, season two, so it's hard to know, really, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Interested. Time agent directed by a Loki director. Hyped. So thoughts on the damage control and the responses uh, to Russell D. Davis having so many scripts. Um... So my thoughts is, I don't think it's about damage control. I mean, it's it's definitely part of it, but it's a, I guess it's in a sort of an extreme way of looking at it. And um, we were talking about this before. Um, when we look at series one, Russell wrote eight out of 13 episodes in that series. Now, it's one of those ones where I think, you know, he wrote eight in the first series. And then after that, he does about five a series, not including the Christmas special. So 5 out of 13 from 8 out of 13. I'd guarantee that the next two episodes are also going to be written by Russell, which means that 6 out of 8 episodes will be written by Russell. It's a similar sort of statistic-ish. Um, I kind of feel that that was to be expected. Um, it's his first season back, and they've made a deal with Disney. They need the show in this season to do better than any other season for the last few years. They, there was a lot riding on season 1, especially with the renaming to start at season one again. They need this to do well. They need this to not just entertain the general audiences, but to pull in a new audience. And I think Russell T. Davis is a brilliant writer. We, we know that. We know he's got a lot of great works in him. And I, I said this way back when, I don't think he would have come back to Doctor Who unless he had some new and interesting ideas that he wanted to bring to the table and new stuff that he wanted to do with it. Um, I love the idea of bringing Stephen back. I think 
it's a great shout writing under Russell. He's always done incredibly well and he comes up with some great concepts. Again, with a few years off from show running, without that pressure, he can probably come up with some good stuff. Um, and again, yeah, obviously Russell is writing again most of the episodes. Do I think that's damage control? Uh, kind of. I don't think it's so much damage control for me, but... Um, it's it's how he writes. It's, it's his approach, and I trust that. You know, um, there's positives and negatives of it. I, I I can see the negatives of it, and I can understand. I do think it's a shame we haven't got um, a person of color writer to write for Shooty's first series. But also, and I and I wish there was had the sort of diversity that we had with the Chibnall era in terms of writing. But I kind of don't mind it because I do trust Russell as a writer I think he's a very intelligent writer and I think he can handle it you know um you know we're talking about way back when when he was writing like he was overseeing a, a series of 13 episodes this probably feels like child's play to him yeah the productions take longer but the writing process is probably I would say somewhat the same just with a bit more knowledge of the budget they might be able to have so I feel like there's a, a lot more leeway with the scripts and a lot more time that they're going to have to develop it, given that there's only eight episodes instead of 13. Um, a lot of people are overreacting, though. A lot of people think it's like a bad thing that Russell's writing. I like it. <clears throat> well, James, I mean, the recent um, escapades are more in terms of his appearance in the public eye not the stuff that he got up to not early in his career but about 10-15 years ago um that obviously came to light recently more recently and has been broadcast alongside the horrendous stuff with Noel Clark as well um so it, it's you know the BBC don't need to bring him back to Doctor Who if they don't want to do you know what I mean uh, it was, I think Barrowman has this idea that he sort of needs to be in it and it sort of it revolves around him. I remember he started shit talking Stephen Moffat after Stephen Moffat didn't bring him back for like series six of Doctor Who, and it's like, okay, but the show, you know, it would have been cool, but the show doesn't revolve around that, you know. Um, he's he's very talkative for the public eye, and it, it, he's not the most popular guy at the minute. He wasn't fired from anything really because he wasn't in Doctor Who when that came out. It, he's been in Doctor Who recently. But he wasn't. I don't. There was no indication that he was planned to be in more Doctor Who after that, and he got fired from it. So that's a, it's a bit of a statement to make. I don't think he was fired from anything. He's just outside of the accusations and stuff that came about came out about him anyway. They he the way he was going on on Twitter and the way he was going on at conventions and stuff and the kind of things he was saying and the videos he was posting come across quite badly, quite smug and quite not as good as it could come across from someone in the public eye and it's completely up to fans whether they want to see more of him or not and personally i thought they came across really badly and i went off him completely i've met the guy and he was lovely when i met him i met him on the set of doctor who i thought he was really nice and i thought it was one of the best things it was an incredible experience seeing him there and i was super super excited um but i just think the way he's gone on in more recent years he's you know he's all right He's sort of calmed down a bit now, but when this sort of stuff was happening about two years ago, he was all over the place ranting and, and, and complaining and posting stuff and shit-talking other people's projects, films and stuff like that. It just doesn't come across well. It's not just about the allegations and stuff that came out about him. Yes, they were earlier in his career, but it still happened. Time Agency took two years of Jack's memory, so maybe something to do with that. Oh, so the 10 hologram is from the next Doctor. Thank you for that. That's a good show. Uh, there was a Flux tie-in graphic novel which um, Jack was in that was cancelled. But yeah, not a fan of John. But again, graphic novel. He, like, John Barrowman wasn't cast in a graphic novel. The only thing that was not released that he was in was the Big Finish audio for Torchwood that had David Tennant in it. But that he'd already recorded that. Like, he still got paid and still had that. You know, he wasn't fired from that. Like, he, that, was, that was just that. They might not have brought him back, but it's the same thing with, like, James Dreyfus, who ended up being a complete transphobe. Like, he wasn't brought back because of his very outward views that he's put online that weren't particularly popular. And, yeah, he's an arsehole for putting those views out there, so... Um... Time Fracture... 
I don't know anything about Time Fracture, really, to be honest. I know there was a few cameos and stuff in there, but I don't know if he was involved with Time Fracture. But again, these are outside of media things. If he was in the show of Doctor Who and he was sacked because of it, that's different. To be fair, it's not the best argument, but Robert Holmes, the best classic script writer, uh, series writer, wrote some of the best episodes uh, while he was the script editor. Something he shouldn't have done. By that, I mean script editors weren't allowed to commission their own scripts due to union rules. Um, do we know how royalties work for who? Bowman's likeness and such. I mean, there's probably there's probably an element of that. I, I don't really... I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm the, the point of all fucking information in regards to all of that. Like, I, I don't know how royalties specifically work in terms of likeness. Um, he's probably been like across these things he probably gets paid for those things and, and, and that's all well and good and if they've got cancelled then that's a shame but like I don't think it's a ma other than a, gra a single graphic novel and a big finished story being not released after being made I don't see I don't know. I don't. I don't see how big of an impact that was had in his at least Doctor Who focused BBC career. Because he still does other things. He still does shows. He still. He's, he's like he's still got a career, but he was never fired from Doctor Who. Listen to our Psycho podcast the other week. Oh my god, that's a throwback. I like you know. I, I I did love that. We've got a new podcast now, and um, trying to get that up on the ground. But like, spill your beans was a lot of fun. It was a very very experimental for me to really like go into more film stuff and try that out, and I enjoyed it. It was kind of there, there comes a problem with doing podcasts like that as well. I think is when you try and get guests on all the time, you sort of run out of guests after a little while, and you're like, shit. It takes a lot of organisation and a lot of thought, pro you know, a lot of thinking, a lot of. Uh, analytics and all that sort of thing whereas the podcast we've got now where it's like me and a co-host we kind of just talk about what we want and I quite like that and when we do eventually get guests on there'll be a little bit more of that but god it was hard doing a guest every week and being the only host of it um, but that, that was a great episode I love talking to you about Psycho and I think that was um, like a, a, one of those rare times where you bring someone on because I know you via the content that you make online more so for Doctor Who of course um so it's great because you sort of bring someone on and uh, someone like yourself who is very well versed in film and passionate about it um, to talk about it in that sort of way is exactly what I wanted from that podcast and I was I was delighted. It was a great episode. Really, really great episode. Um, we've got another title reveal in seven minutes. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. The John the John Barrowman stuff is a tricky one. We're not going to go on about it. We're not going to go into the whole like cancellation and all that sort of thing of, of of people's careers or what have you. It's it is what it is. I'm not entirely like, you know, I I, I don't know. I saw the clips regarding FNAF. I might as well ask. Uh, but which one is your favourite? The first one I think is incredible. To be honest, I think that's the that's the one for me in terms of the horror and terms of everything. The second one's alright but messy. The third one's a bit broken. The fourth one is scary. Sister location's decent, but the first one is my sort of favourite one. If you want to hear more of my opinions on the Five Nights at Freddy's series, again, click the pinned link uh, in the chat to take yourself over to our podcast nostalgia bit where we talked about. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's uh, in a recent episode. We talked all about that. That's where the clips come from, obviously. Please do check out the podcast itself. Have a listen to it. Lots of Five Nights at Freddy's opinions in there, especially the film as well. Um, Chibnall kind of wrote him out, per out perfectly in Revolution. Like a burnt-out hero, sure that he doesn't have much to offer anymore. I mean, that's kind of true as well. Um, last one, two-parter, probably. Presuming the third episode is called Boom and it's a Moffat classic, it's genius strategy after two episode premiere. Yeah, it's it's a great idea. James, I'm not going to go on about it, mate, but what I will say is that... He isn't a, a, a key lead character in current Doctor Who, right? Like, he has projects that were going on, like Big Finish and all that sort of thing. And 
the graphic stuff, the graphic novel stuff, of course, he's probably paid in somewhat for that as well. But my point is that his entire career isn't just Doctor Who. He does other things. He does singing and dancing, and he does shows which are still doing really well. He's still got an audience, and he's still got a passionate fan base. He's not struggling financially, right? And he wasn't in the show of Doctor Who and was sacked from it. He just wasn't... They just didn't... There was just no more stories with him in it that they wanted him for. It's like if they stopped making, like, Jackie Tyler big finished ones. Like, it doesn't mean they're firing, like, the actress who plays Jackie Tyler. It just means that they don't want to make any more for one reason or another. I think it's a very extreme view to be like, oh, he was sacked from everything. No, he wasn't. He's pr- He's got a pretty strong career even still, and he does quite well for himself. So I wouldn't be worrying about him that much just because one big finished story wasn't released that he was probably, probably was paid to do voice acting for. He does acting work. He still does theatre work. He still does shows. He's still in stuff. Like, he's not struggling like financially he's still pretty much doing well for himself just because he's not in doctor who doesn't mean his entire career is over it was probably the thing he was known most for but let's also bear in mind that he hasn't actually been in doctor who other than series 12 he hadn't been in it since fucking the end of time 2010 it was a you know we're talking about like still about a 10 year difference from when he was on there and he appeared in two episodes and then hasn't been back since it's like he wasn't like a regular character who showed up every series you know what i mean Um, anyway. The film was mid, but I liked it. I liked it as well. It was a bit mid, though. <laughs> Are you still planning to watch the two-part of premiere at midnight? Um, I am. I don't like the idea of it coming out at midnight. I'm very against that, and I don't like that. Like, I, I just don't... Meh. <laughs> I just... I, I don't... I don't like the idea of it. I understand why they're doing it. It's because of Disney Plus. They're putting a lot of money into it. But it, we have to accept that, unfortunately, it is just a Disney series now, isn't it, really? It is the BBC in the UK, but everywhere else in the world it's Disney. And it's suiting every other time zone bar ours. And that's fine. We can still watch it on TV. The general audiences can still watch it when they would without spoilers because they don't care about spoilers. The general audience, they're not paying attention to the lore and the canon of the show. The fans will more than likely stay up till midnight to watch it. And myself, look, if I'm not busy that weekend, if I'm not doing stuff... I'll be up up to midnight watching it. If not, I'll watch it the next morning without looking at Twitter. Um, I feel like I feel like seven and eight are going to be a two-parter, but I have a feeling they're going to be two different titles. I don't think it's going to be part one and part two. Um, do you think there'll be a chance they'll drop the two-part finale on the same night? I don't think so. I think they'll have to leave a cliffhanger because it keeps people interested. It keeps theories going. It worked for a premiere of a show, but not for the finale, I don't think. In my eyes, anyway. More standalone stories means more variety. Yeah, exactly. Completely agree. I'm sure it'll look great, but a bigger budget to me should go straight to more of the episode's locations, variety, and surroundings. I agree. I completely agree as well. I think we've got a little bit more... There's, there's, there's more interesting stuff that can be done without just sticking people on a green screen and using a really good CGI budget. Like, it'll go a long way. I'll be really interested. This series is going to be a real crossroads series, I feel, for a lot of fans. It's going to be so different, but so familiar. And it'll be whether it works for you or doesn't work for you. It's it, it's probably going to be... Hopefully, generally... I hope it's, like, objectively good. <laughs> you know? But it's hard to tell. And it's also, who is it for? Is it for the diehard fans who can't let go of the past? Or is it for the new audience that they're trying to bring on. More likely for the new audience. But as a fan, I'm excited for it, and I think they're doing interesting stuff with it. Um, but a two-part finale, I do like the idea of, even with a reduced episode count, I still think it leaves that cliffhanger open. Um, it doesn't have to be strictly like one big story, but you could have it lead into the next one nicely. And I'd like it if every episode lead like leads into the next one, but it won't. Govern the show would last seven weeks, so they aren't releasing the last two together. Allows discussion, the cliffhanger for a week. If the last two are a two parter, we don't know that. <clears throat> oh shit, time, new title, new title, new title. 
The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Oh, this is definitely leading into the finale then. Oh, shit. So we've got what looks like a sort of camera monitor here, camera looking at a screen, and a big projector screen saying, The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Oh my god, do I love that title. That's one of my favourites. Easy, easy, one of my favourites. Um, written by Russell T. Davis. Duh. <laughs> um, so given that, that's probably the first, the lead-in to the finale, isn't it? James Donahue, Jamie Donahue, sorry, is directing it, who uh, hasn't directed any of the other ones yet, I don't think. No, so that's a new director. What is Jamie Donahue known for? Do we know? I'm trying to look at other people's works. Um, <laughs> Doctor Who, two episodes. Episode seven, episode eight. Okay, so he's re he's he's directing those final two episodes. Interesting. Intriguing. Um. Interesting. Not too much there, but I don't know if I've seen any of this stuff. I haven't. But cool. That's a really cool title. Um. So this is probably going to be the lead into the finale. I'm getting a bit tired now. I can tell it's five o'clock. But yeah, this is it's always a three-hour stream now. Ah! Got to power through to the end, though. That's that's the aim here, isn't it? Um, oh, I'm excited. This is a really cool one. Doesn't sound like a Roswell story, though. I feel like maybe the Roswell story isn't a Roswell story and is more like... I think the slug one is going to be Dot and Bubble, I think. Technically, getting three guest writers between two episodes. And yeah, one of them, Stephen Moffat. Yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> that's true, isn't it? But I, as I said, I don't mind it, personally. Uh, if we were expecting the last two episodes to not be written by Russell D. Davis, you were kidding yourself. It was always going to happen. I don't particularly mind it. I think the uh, people will love the politics behind it and love to argue against it, what have you. Um, I don't really... I couldn't really care less, to be honest. Um... Yeah. I don't really care. <laughs> Total Adipose story. Um, yeah, Adipose story. Possible, like, Black Mirror vibes. Kind of, like, nosedive from Black Mirror. Um, a little bit of uh, M-Core from Red Dwarf. as a bit of more of an obscure one. Um, but sort of um, retro pastel colour futuristic kind of vibes um, I wonder if that'll be the one with the politics as well um, the Albion thing and the big slugs I think it's probably going to be the big slugs I don't know if it'll be the Albion one Roswell is that, yeah because the script started with Roswell but we don't know if that's the actual thing, maybe that's 73 yards that would kind of fit that vibe I guess um, yeah Or did Roswell was the Roswell one not episode seven like confirmed? Does that actually not st does the Legend of Ruby Sunday not start with Roswell? Goofy aliens use modern fur to invade. Yeah, I'm 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 game for that. To be honest, that sounds like it could be really naff or it could be like really great. As I said before, jokingly, it's kind of giving me Saranga conundrum vibes. So I'm not really too sure, but I I you know what I like that. I like the vibe of it. I think it works. Um, it's probably the the. The one that I'm least excited for, just because I'm like, I'm not too sure about what it's going to entail or what it's going to be like. The rest of them, yeah, I love that. So we've got almost a whole series worth here. That's seven uh, out of eight episodes. Titles announced. The last one's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be The Legend of Ruby Sunday and then maybe something, something, something Ruby Sunday. I don't know. Um... I don't really want Moffat in here. Oh, interesting. See, for me, I'm kind of... I don't know. I, I'm kind of like the idea of it. Because, I, I I mean, it's obviously retreading all ground a little bit. But, again, I kind of think when you're not sure running you're and you're not, you haven't been doing it for years, you're not burnt out with ideas, you know. And I feel like Russell and Stephen work really well together anyway as mates. So it'll be interesting. This boom story will be a really interesting look as to how Stephen Moffat has developed as a writer, as to whether it's as good as his older stuff, or whether it's 
run down and, and tired and done before. Season 12 was, was also dominated by one voice and suffers for it. Um, all the coincidences surrounding her, surely someone's putting them together. What is the Roswell thing? So the Roswell incident is uh, like a famous UFO crash sighting thing. And it's been like hidden away in Air, um, Area 51 or what have you. Um, but apparently in one of the scripts, I think it was episode 7, in Doctor Who magazine... Uh, Russell mentioned that it started with, like, Roswell in, like, the 50s. So it made sense. But then now I'm sort of like, well, this is the beginning of the finale. What is Roswell going to have to do with it? A lot of people at the time thought we're going to get, like, a Roswell alien episode. But we're probably not, by the looks of it. Um, apparently Moffat brings back the silent soldiers, not the aliens, but the bishops. According to who, though? Because I've not seen anything about that. Interesting though. What do you think the trailer is going to be like? I don't know. The trailer. I reckon the trailer will have clips from every episode. I think that's what it's going to be. I have a feeling that it's probably going to be one of those ones where it's like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It'll show something from the episode, and then the, a bit, a bit like the one we got last year. Doctor Who titles reveal. This one. When we got this and we got some some images and all that sort of thing and then Star Beast, right? And then some other shite, Wild Blue Yonder, and then some other shite and then the giggle. And that and then we had some more general sort of stuff. So stuff we've already seen before. So I reckon there'll be a bit of a recut Disney trailer with the titles here in there. Um what if Dot and Bubble is the, is the little gif that comes up when people are messaging? Um it's a good idea, actually. Tech company, Triad. We know Triad has something to do with it, and we know Albion has something to do with it, and those haven't been mentioned yet, and I'm quite glad about that. Doesn't mean Moffat is a must-have contender. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Have you gone over the Triad technology account? I don't think it's real, but I don't know how to check. Oh, yeah, let's do that again, because people missed it, I think. We did talk about the Triad technology account. It's just the one on Twitter. Um... It's fake. Let's be fair. Like, look, I, I, I don't criticise the person for doing it. I think it's a great idea. It gets a bit of publicity going, gets a bit of excitement around it, gets 200 likes on their account, gets 300 followers on their brand new account. But the fact of the matter is, this is not BBC level graphic design. And this is a very easy guess. We know that triad technology is a thing for Doctor Who, this series. And we know that there was going to be a trailer tomorrow. So it's an easy guess to make an account off the back of. But it's clearly a fake account. They've done a good job, though. they followed all the right things, but it's not been promoted or shared by anything BBC-related. Do you think they would make a Triad Technology account when they're about to release all their titles and they have nothing to do with Triad Technology so far? I don't know. Uh, yes, I'll be live reacting to the trailer at 6pm. <sighs> Oh, God forbid. It's going to be a bloody four-hour live stream at this point. Um, I won't be streaming much longer after that. I will just say I'm not going to be going on past that four-hour mark because that's just very tiring and a lot of work. And I kind of want to chill on my lovely little Easter Sunday as opposed to just talking about Doctor Who all day. But I'm happy to do it now and I really enjoy it. So now there's 124 of you, which, again, thank you if you are watching. Really, really appreciate that. Um... Let's talk about um, just a few things I want to sort of promote and show off. As always, we're like doing sort of one an hour at the minute. Um, if you are new here to the Who Bulletin and you don't usually tune into this sort of stuff, um, we do stream pretty much every single Tuesday from 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock uh, on this channel, the Who Bulletin. We talk about the latest Doctor Who news and all that sort of stuff, if there is news. If there isn't, then we, we, we just don't stream. Um, but on Tuesdays from 7 till 8, we talk about um, all that sort of thing. The Triad Technology account follows you why does it don't think it does oh, it does follow me <laughs> whoever's is someone who's running that account in this stream if you are good on you that's hilarious that's really funny <laughs> oh no i'm being followed by triad shit um that's really funny actually <laughs> that's hilarious um yeah, it's clearly a fake account, but, uh, you know, I respect the people behind it for doing it. Um, 
But yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we do stream here most Tuesdays um, talking about Doctor Who news. So if you're not already subscribed, notifications on or tuning in to our Tuesday Who bulletins where we talk about the latest Doctor Who news, um, then yeah, then please do check out that. And we do that. And we also stream on Twitch on Tuesdays after the Who bulletin from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock um, playing some video games over on Twitch, which is quite fun. Um, and beyond that, every single Thursday, as you can probably see here, we have a podcast. And the podcast is called Nostalgia Bait. Uh, we talk about the latest and greatest in films. We talk about uh, we, uh, me and my friend Cooper. We, we sort of co-host it together. Um, we talk about films, TV, games, whatever we sort of want to talk about, really. And yeah, I absolutely love it. It's a lot of fun. And I would love it if you guys could jump on it, drop a follow. It is actually linked in the chat and the description below. It's actually pinned in the chat, so you can click on that very easily. Um, but yeah, it's something that we're really passionate about, getting off the ground. There's going to be new episodes every single Thursday. This week, I'm going to tell you a little bit of an exclusive. We're doing a video games episode, talking about our top five video games of all time. It was a super interesting one. Me and Cooper have very different tastes. Um, but so far, we've got uh, like an introduction episode, Star Wars, Newcastle, uh, Oscar film nominations, Spider-Man, Five Nights at Freddy's, Westworld, and there is many, many more to come, including a Doctor Who episode, which of course will be coming out alongside the launch of the new series, so that'll only be about a month away, keep an eye on that. But yes, um, check out this, please, check out in the chat, drop us a follow, if you do give us a follow, let me know in the chat, and I'll give you a lovely little shout out as well, so I would really, really appreciate that. But we do that every Thursday, and if you can't be asked to go on Spotify, we also do have it on this channel as well under the podcast section here you can look at all the episodes here as well but we prefer spotify it's also on amazon it's also on apple podcast anywhere you get your podcast from basically so yeah check that out uh try out technology <laughs> i see you you fucks <laughs> oh they, they unfollowed me they follow fairies now ah someone's being a a blooming a blooming funster and i don't like that i don't like fun <laughs> yeah no thank you um <laughs> yeah great title so how would you all rank the titles from worst to best so far i would personally go I'm going to go Space Babies at the bottom. Just because it's kind of like a basic one. Um, Space Babies, 73 yards. The episode looks great, but um, the title's fine. Um, probably Boom. Then Dot and Bubble. Rogue. The Devil's Chord. And The Legend of Ruby Sunday. That's my, that's my ranking, I'd say. Um, they hate the concept of space babies. Sorry, I think that's an alright idea. Spaceship, random scary monster babies, sort of like a spaceship nursery kind of thing. That's kind of fun. And someone asked as well, how do I rank um, Moffat stories from Russell T. D. Uh, Russell T. D. Russell T. Davis's first era, including Time Crash? Um, okay. I'm going to combine the two parts as, as well. I think for me, probably Time Crash at the bottom, just because it's a skit. It's not really like a proper episode. Um, oh, man. Time Crash at the bottom. And then I would say, controversially, Empty Child and Doctor Dances. Then... I guess I mean, they're all brilliant, mind. There's no, there's no bad story of Moffat's in Russell's first era. I'd probably say the um, uh, Silence of the Library, Forest of the Dead, excellent story, but probably that's next. If I'm being honest. Uh, then then Blink, then Girl in the Fireplace. Fuck it, we'll do a controversial one. I think Girl in the Fireplace is excellent, and I love that story. Peak, peak, peak tenant. Peak tenant. 
Um, yeah. Hmm. We've got 15 minutes until the next title reveal. Interesting. I think Girl in the Fireplace is brilliant. The only thing I don't like about Girl in the Fireplace is the sort of romantic subplot between um, Madame de Pompadour and the Doctor. But that's just a minor thing. Like I don't, I don't love that, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'm not talking about the title. I'm talking about like the actual episodes. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Ah, I'm gonna go. It's a good time to go for a quick toilet break. I think I'm bursting. I'll be right back, ladies and gents. I am here. <laughs> I'm here. I am here. Ah, oh, let's play another round of thirteen while we're waiting for the final title to reveal. Um, but yeah, ask all your Doctor Who questions. Go for it. Go for it. Have some fun. Pretty easy when you do it like this. Um, how far have you gotten in 13? Up to Smith, I think, is my, my latest. Have you done today's... Ooh, let's do the hoodle. I've seen this before. It's a daily, like, thing. We have... Ooh, fucking hell. All right. So you have to guess the Doctor Who episode. Now, I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm a little bit of a nerd. I do know what this aspect ratio is. So I know that it's post Jodie Whittaker. Um... But I can't... I actually don't know what this is. It's post Jodie Whittaker's The Aspect Ratio. I'm going to go... Uh, can you hear me? No. Oh, it's fucking Church on Ruby Road. Oh, my God. I genuinely was like... I, I, what was the first one again? Oh, it's all the kids on the fridge. Ah, oh, idiot. 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 I'm an idiot. 
That's that's the fact of the matter. I'm a fucking idiot. Um. I genuinely just did not remember the fridge thing. That's a clever little one. That's great because the hat and the thing. That's obvious, obvious, obvious. Yeah. Damn. That's really annoying. I should do this every live stream, shouldn't I? Do the do the daily hoodle. Um, it's a great idea. Whoever made that. The Legend of Ruby Sunday's Truman Show vibes. I like that. Yeah, it's a good. That's a good little analysis of that. Actually, I like that. Don't know who's shouting in the background. Apologies for that. <laughs> Someone in my flat playing Mario Kart, I believe. Lots of fun. <laughs> Lots of fun to be had, as per. Um, oh, I'm terrible. What's the version of the theme called that you put on the sc- uh, on while you went off screen? Um, it's from Peter Miles, phenomenal um, uh, composer. Does a lot of Doctor Who themes as well. He's very talented. Very, very talented. And you should go and check out their work. Um, but yeah, you should go and check it out. It's really good stuff. And uh, yeah, this is one of their more recent ones. It's a great little theme. It's a great little theme. I thought I will absolutely use that. Love a love a Doctor Who theme variation, you know. Which of Shooty's outfits do I like the most? Or look forward to seeing the most? I mean, I've seen most of them from the trailers, but um, I'm I'm excited for... Uh, there's not, I mean, there's not many I'm like, specifically like thinking about that I'm excited for, but I, I, I do like... A lot of his fits are great. Can't You can't lie about that. I mean, he, he pulls off pretty much like any outfit. So you really can't... You can't say he doesn't, because he bloody does as well. Annoyingly, I can't believe there's a human out there who can pull off any outfit. Come on. Damn, 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 damn. Oh, this bloody game. <sighs> Oh, God, it's jumping all around the bloody screen. How'd they explain the changing hair? It'll either be a wig or it'll be some sort of Time Lord feature where we can change his hair. I kind of feel like, knowing the vibe that they're going for, that they'll probably go for something like that, to be honest. Which, uh, I'll also say, I don't mind. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think it's actually kind of a fun idea. Ah, uh, you can, this this regeneration can just change his hair length at will. Because you could just argue that Capaldi could do the same thing. <laughs> Not that he could, but he, his hair changed like every episode. We didn't have an uh, in-universe explanation for that, did we? So maybe now we can. It's actually fixing plot holes by doing that. Think of it that way and you'll love it. Tyler's wiki will be all over that. What the fuck is shouting like? That's madness. Ah, oh, look at that. Beautiful Eccleston. Um, he's had holographic hair before. His announced outfit will barely appear. Yeah, it's true, actually. It's a bit of a weird one. I think that's the one thing I don't like. As much as he looks great in every outfit that he does, I kind of would prefer it if we had, like, one official outfit, like his main outfit. Now, I would personally count the Church on Ruby Road outfit as his main one because he's worn it in multiple episodes. He's worn it in the Church on Ruby Road and episode one. But I don't know. He's probably the Doctor that doesn't wear one costume, which is kind of unusual for the, the, uh, for the Doctor, but... I'll take it. It's something new, isn't it? Come on. This bloody Hartnell thing is just annoying as frig. There we go. Oh, nice. That was good. 
yeah, keep me keep me posted if it's like five minutes to go. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. Fun game though. <laughs> it's just very like ad quiet and addictive. I'm like, yeah, this is this is the shit, man. Yes, I'm doing quite well here actually. This is a this is a good a good little round. Mm -hmm. You try to work out the strategies over time, don't you? So we can't currently. Oh, fucking hell, we just messed that up horribly. Thoughts on Ruby being the main companion for one season and recurring more for a second. Many says there's a big twist and we'll see coming. I'm excited for it. People, I, I, I think it's really cruel how people have jumped on this this idea of her jumping ship and, and leaving the show when we don't know apps, we don't know at all if that's true. And it's probably not because she has been, you know, like oh, she's like a diva or something. I think it's awful. I think it's awful the way the press works sometimes, and I think it's frankly disgusting the way people have went on. Um, but that's just the media for you, isn't it? And then, obviously, people blame Russell T. Davis, which I think is a bit unfair. But then also, yeah, they probably could have voiced their support and concern for the way the press were treating her. Um, it was a horrible story. Um, and it was one that didn't really deserve to go anywhere. She's in the second series. She's filming for it. And she's in, you know, she's in the show and she's doing well. She's also a young actress towards the start of her career. Let's not ruin it before she even bloody begins it. I mean, that's just, you know, common sense. Um, maybe the TARDIS is sick of him constantly wearing the, own, uh, the only owning one outfit. Purge all copies from the wardrobe, so he has to change every time. That's a fair point, actually. I kind of like that. There probably will never be an explanation for it. It will very much just be, oh, they just got a different outfit every episode. And that's fun. And they can do that if they want. That's the nature of the show. They can kind of do whatever they want with it. They don't have to stick to that, that, that singular rule book. That's the point, you know. And I kind of like that idea. Okay, hang on. I don't wanna I don't wanna fuck this up. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. We we're 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 getting somewhere now. Um just kind of start spamming if it's like one minute before and I'm not talking about the, the title because I'm I know it's two minutes before now. I'm doing quite well in this round though. I feel good about it. Don't want to mess up my little streak I've got going here. It's a puzzle. That's the whole thing, isn't it? You've got to sort of solve the puzzle. Another Peter Davis, not another Mr. McCoy there. It's not great, is it? We've got one minute to go yet? No, almost. Fucking hell, we're ruining this here. Fuck. Yeah. Bugged it. Perfect timing, though. Let's go over to the Doctor Who page. And we need to refresh in about 40 seconds. Lovely stuff. Do you mind talking about Series 15, rumours and theories? Guessing you've seen a bit of stuff filming. What's your theory about the abandoned TARDIS in uh, 73 yards, if you have one? I think it's like a turn left kind of thing. I think something's changed and something's going all weird and what have you. Um, but I... I don't know. I don't know. Um... I don't really know if I have any theories. I'm just excited for it. That's one thing that I can't really get my head around. We've already had a dead Doctor alternate timeline thing. So maybe it's an alternate universe that gets thrown into or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm excited. Okay, here we go. 
And the finale title is... Empire of Death. That's a Doctor Who title. Alright, uh, you know what, I like that. <laughs> Directed by Jamie Donahue and written by Russell T. Davis, so it's obviously some sort of two-parter. Empire of Death is such a cool title. Doesn't really mean anything specific, but it's very cool. Empire of Death. Someone talking there about the um, Legions of the Toymaker. Definitely something related to that, I would say. Um... Super interesting. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a really cool uh, title. I'm a big fan of that. Can't lie. Love that to bits. Um, <laughs> That's a terrible joke, but we'll, we'll go with it. Um, absolutely adore that. So... We have episode one, Space Babies. Episode two, The Devil's Chord. Episode three, Boom. Episode four, 73 Yards. Episode five, Dot and Bubble. Episode six, Rogue. Episode seven, The Legend of Ruby Sunday. And episode eight, Empire of Death. Whew, that is a shit hot lineup, I can't lie. There's not many bad titles in there. Robots of Death, yeah, it kind of vibes. Review of Death podcast will be loving that. <laughs> ah, Empire of Death is already a book. Interesting. Interesting. This is cool. I'm excited for that. What do we all think of that? Give me your opinions in the chat. I'd love to read them out. Um, Toymaker arrives invading Earth. I don't think the Toymaker will be back, but I kind of like the legions of the Toymaker being somewhat involved. I have a feeling that Jinx Monsoon's character in um, The Devil's Chord is going to be one of the Toymaker's legions. She uses, like, the music notes flying through the air to sort of unravel people and this idea of music being used as, like, a power. Um, was kind of teased in uh, The Giggle with the whole da-da-da-da-da-da-da, that whole thing. Um, that's, but you know, a musical uh, note. Um... I feel like that's also a thing. It's like she's like abides by the rules of the music in the same way that uh, the toy maker abides by the laws of the game. Like you, the rule of three. Like he has to concede if he's if he loses, um, and that's the same thing with Jinx Monsoon's character. So we've got one. I think she's definitely a member of the toy maker's legions. Let's say um, Empire of Death will either be something to do with the toy maker or could be something to do with the boss. Um, that we know from the um, the Star Beast as well. The beat, uh, beat the Meep sort of mentioned uh, a boss who could be coming. Bit of a mystery box kind of thing, but yeah. Um, Space Babies is quite similar to an earthly child. I didn't think about that. That's quite a fun little one. Um, what someone said there... Uh, the note of the TARDIS is being a bit dodgy. Weren't we meant to pay attention to the TARDIS? Yeah, the TARDIS has been a bit funky this series, and, and, and it's sort of teaming up to be. This Legend of Ruby Sunday thing with the with the, um, the camera, that looks uh, super interesting. I can't lie. That's given me really nice, like fun, interesting, like existential kind of vibes. Um, this is your life kind of thing. Um, but I'm so, I'm so excited about that. That's really cool. Um... Four great titles, four okay titles. Fair enough. Thary's stream's just ended. I think views might increase. Well, you never know. Hopefully. If you are coming from Thary's theme, well, uh, Thary's theme? Thary's stream, welcome. And again, if you are new here, we do stream uh, The Who Bulletin every single Tuesday talking about the latest Doctor Who news. 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock every single Tuesday. It's basically this, but within an hour instead of four. <laughs> this is fun, though. I like this. I like it. Picasso. I'll just put another teaser up here. YouTube discussing and live reacting to everything. 
Come and join. Shock face. <laughs> uh, very, very interesting. I'm super excited about this. I can't lie. It's, it's, it's been a really great stream. I've really appreciated everyone tuning in. It's been super exciting to re react live to these things. Um, we haven't done one of these since Shooty was announced as the Doctor. And that was really exciting. <laughs> the legendary piece. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a great edit. Oh my god. That's great. Um. Oh! Cast Oh! Oh! Press release. Uh, Golda. Uh, Rochevel, I'm terrible at names, is jumping aboard the TARDIS for Shooty Gatwa and Millie Gibson's first season of Doctor Who. There'll be more guest stars and full set of episode titles too. Of course they're going to be... Okay, let's read this. So, um, It's been amazing to see a whole world uh, appreciate Gold's talents because of Bridgerton. It's been an absolute joy to invite her to Cardiff to help launch Shooty and Millie's first season. This looks really interesting, this screenshot as well. I wonder if this is... This is from the legend of... Uh... Oh, no, it's not. Look, this is Space Babies. Look. I've got a theory. I've got a theory, guys. You're going to love this one. Right. Got planets here, some sort of space station. These hallways here, these hallways here, they look to me like the... Oh, shit, hang on. They look like the hallways in... These shots here. Uh, the sort of uh, air vent things there. Um... Looks to me like those air vent sort of things here, sort of small lights, the way it's done. Obviously, like a pink hue across the screen, but I think that these uh, are from that episode. And with it being called Space Babies, I think my theory would be that this character, this actress here, will be playing some sort of space nanny, similar to that of um, the Adipose episode, I suppose. Um, oh, shit. Didn't mean to click off that. Um, but she'll be sort of... Maybe like a sort of nanny figure, maybe some sort of helping hand. But this looks to be the first episode. This looks to be from Space Babies. So, uh, that's such a weird name. I'm <laughs> really used to saying that. Um, very interesting, but let's keep reading some. As Doctor Who gears up for its highly anticipated simultaneous global premiere this May, the episode titles have now been revealed for the season, as well as another incredible guest star who's jumped above the TARDIS. And as another Easter e treat, viewers will give, be given another official trailer that will launch on the BBC, so BBC Doctor Who social channels at 6pm before first airing on BBC One on Sunday 31st of March. We've got 20 minutes before a new trailer, guys. We're going to be live react to a new trailer. I'm so excited. Um... Up first in the Julianne Robinson directed Space Babies. Oh yeah, we see. I was, was theorising, and it was fucking in the in the article. I'm an idiot. Um, who joins Doctor Who is Jocelyn, who the Doctor and Ruby collide with in their first adventure in the TARDIS together. Uh, Russell T Davis adds, "It's been amazing to see what the whole yeah we've we've got that. Um, we've already read that bit out." Rounding out the explosive double bill is previously announced Jinx Monsoon, who stars in The Devil's Chord as the Doctor's most powerful enemy yet. They always fucking say that. They always say that. Um, in this episode, the Doctor and Ruby step back to the 60s to meet the Beatles. Thank you, Snicker Boy, for subscribing. Um, the new episodes will then debut weekly across BBC iPlayer, BBC One, and outside of the UK Disney Plus where available, with Stephen Moffat penned Adventure Boom up next, followed by 73 Yards, Dot and Bubble, Rogue, and a massive two-part finale spread over two weeks titled The Legend of Ruby, Ruby Sunday and The Empire of Death. So it is a two-part finale confirmed there. Uh, Legend of Ruby Sunday and Empire of Death. Over the rest of the season there have been a rate of brilliant guest stars jumping up all the TARDIS. Are these all... Have these all been announced? Can I... Um, Sean Phillips, Alexander Different, Bob Joshi. These are all new? Are these all new cast stars? Did we know these were going to be in Doctor Who? Am I going mad? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look... Yeah, these aren't in the... These are new uh, casting. Oh, God. Okay, hang on. Oh, the previously announced guest cast of uh, Michelle Greenwich, uh, Angela Winter, Anita Dobson, um, Anurin Bernard, Yasmin Finney, Jonathan Groff... Grand Morris Jones, Bonnie Langford, Genesis Liner, Gemma Redgrave, Lenny Rush, uh, and Dira Varma. I'm terrible at names, by the way. I don't know if, you, don't know if you've uh, worked that one out yet, but uh, awful. Who is she? I'm trying to, All of these people are new cast members that have just been announced, by the way. So we want to keep an eye on that. Um... 
Well, I think that is when the creature scares the Doctor and Ruby, they are in a simulation room in unit testing something maybe. Interesting theory. So, who are all of these people? We don't know anything about their characters, so it's not going to be that much to sort of theorise from, but I'm just wanting to see if there's anyone I recognise from anything, because I don't know if I will. I am terrible at... <laughs> my eyes are hurting now. I can't lie. We're streaming for four hours. My eyes are, like, going now. <laughs> oh, so a child actor who's in the Midnight Sky. Interesting. So we've got... Um, Taisha, who was in... D June Part 1? Come on! And Waterloo Road, Pennyworth. Um, that they're in June. That's pretty cool. My June... My Arrakis. <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay, so Luke Jurdy? Is this, is this the same? No, professional music Jurdy, okay. Not many things that I've seen. But I have Joshi, let's have a look. Again, not very much I've seen. Vigil. Hmm. Oh! It's the guy! Colonel Abraham from fucking The Giggle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Abraham, yes. Oh, yeah, I, did. I was going to say, I did recognise him. Cool. Yeah, yeah, So he's coming back as the unit soldier from before. That's cool that he's, he's getting a clip in that. Dame Sean Phillips. That seems like a big name, but I don't know what she's been in. She's in June! <laughs> the original June. We've got some, a lot of June actors here today. Uh, I'm not going to do the Baron Harkin thing again, but yeah. She's in the Warmaster podcast series. Interesting. <laughs> oh, well, not podcast series, but the Warmaster audio series. Christmas Carol? Doctor Who? New Adventures of Bernie Summerfield? Interesting. She's been in Big Finish before then, basically. Um, in quite a few Big Finish stories, by the looks of it. I don't know what she's known for, though. I, Claudius, and June. Interesting. Welsh-born stage veteran. Wow. Exciting. Um, Callie Cook. I don't know much of her work. Either. No, that's the, the director from before. Cool. So there's a lot of new names there for you to look up. Um, I don't particularly know mo most of those. or am not familiar with their work. Episode titles. Yeah. Simultaneously, first time BBC iPlayer and Disney Plus in the UK. The first two episodes of the season will drop on premiere at midnight on May 11th. Uh, BBC iPlayer and then on BBC One later that day. Episodes will drop on BBC iPlayer followed by the primetime slot on BBC One each week. Um... Following that, yeah, outside the UK, Doctor Who begins streaming at 10th of May at 7pm, ET and Disney Plus, where available, giving audience a simultaneous global launch. A simultaneous global lunch? <laughs> Sounds nice. Um, oh man, it's hitting me now, I'm tired, but I'm excited. <laughs> Ooh! Hasn't it? Yeah, that's an interesting graphic. That's something that hasn't been pointed out before. Exciting stuff. I'm very excited about this. I can't lie. A lot of people seem to be quite... Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a good point as well. Not great, but, you know, it, I, I, as I said, we've already talked so much about... Oh, Christ. We've already talked so much about Russell being, like, the key writer for most of this series. I'm not going to keep whittling on about it, but, um, yeah. Really cool. And I love that we've got some great graphics as well. Top, top work from the... Um, the graphic design department um, over at the BBC, the people, the team who made these, absolutely incredible stuff. Genuinely, genuinely brilliant. Um, yeah, it's excellent. Oh, have you just made that? There you go, I'm going to have a cheeky little retweet. There you go. <laughs> it's excellent. Um, I also forgot I was sharing my screen, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, we have now got about 15 minutes before we have a brand new Doctor Who trailer. And we know that for sure. It's not going to drop at a random time. The Doctor Who account has just released a short. Let's have a look at the Doctor Who channel's hashtag shorts, shall we? 
Ja. Cool. Cool. I like this, by the way. I think this should be the logo in the actual title sequence. Let's not do the big goofy 3D one PNG thing. There we go. That's my that's my contribution there. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up so I look famous. <laughs> um No worries. Oh, we can be breaking down the tail or just reacting to it. Um, only 60 likes. Can we get it up to 100? What, on here or on the short? No, oh, fucking no. 66 likes on here, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe keep liking this, keep liking this live stream, I guess. But thank you all for tuning in for so long. Christ, I mean, we've been going for almost four hours now. Um, will I be reacting to the trailer or breaking it down or a bit of both? I will be doing a little, little breakdown. Um, but we'll be doing... A more in-depth Q and A chat about it on Tuesday um, for that episode of the Who Bulletin when we do that. So all I want to basically tell you to do is we're going to kind of have a bit of a quick look through of it. Um, I'm going to kind of break down what I can see initially, and then when we come back on Tuesday, we'll be doing an overview kind of Q and A thing, I guess. Um, so if you want to know a full sort of in-depth breakdown and like more opinions after having a couple of days to rest on it and not being at the end of a four-hour stream. Um, you can tune into our next episode of the Who Bulletin, um, which will be going live on Tuesday at seven o'clock uh, until eight o'clock for a little hour news roundup bulletin session, like we do every single week. This is a bit of an out of the ordinary stream, so if you are new to this, which I'm sure a lot of you are, because we definitely don't get 110 concurrent viewers on our usual episodes of the Who Bulletin. So welcome, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're going to be continuing to react to the trailer when it drops. Um, but yeah, every single week, Tuesday from 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock, The Who Bulletin, this very same live stream, we stream for an hour on YouTube every Tuesday talking about the latest and greatest Doctor Who news, reviews, etc. Um, you can check them out on the channel. Um, you can actually probably see some of the past broadcasts we've had. Um, over here, you can see pretty much everything that we've already done so far. We've had a lot of fun with all of that um, and a lot of fun in these live streams talking about the actual reviews. Obviously, I didn't do a proper review of um, the Church on Ruby Road or the Star Beast. So if you want to check them out, you can check it out on here, what I thought of those. Um, but I'm really excited. You know, I'm, I'm really, really well excited. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun um, for the next one that we do. A lot of Mr. Beast style thumbnails there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we stream every single Tuesday here on YouTube, 7 till 8 o'clock, talking about the latest Doctor Who news. So get subscribed, get your notifications on, and come back every Tuesday, 7 o'clock. If you struggle with that, though, and you don't really want to do, you know, you're sort of like, oh, well, George, I need a handy notification, actually, of um, when you go live. Otherwise, I'm, I, I can't be asked. Well, here is a link to our little lovely little discord community if you want to join our discord you can hop over there and you will get notified every time we go live on youtube every time we go live on twitch and every time i post a new podcast episode um every tuesday as well obviously we do go live on twitch immediately after uh, playing some video games at the moment we're playing batman arkham city but that might change this week depending on how arsed i can be and yeah and then obviously every thursday as well as we've just talked about um we have a podcast called Nostalgia Bay. It is pinned in the chat. Hey, look at that. Someone has actually... Thank you to uh, Dan Ganron Pafan 2040... Whatever, 2407. Um, for just following me over on Twitch. If you go into the description of this live stream, we actually do have a Twitch page. Uh, Twitch.tv slash GB Sheard. We do stream on Twitch after every uh, every Tuesday evening after the Who Bulletin, playing some video games. So if you want to watch me play video games terribly, you can go over here and uh, drop me a follow. I realise that's not obvious. It's not obvious, is it? There we go. <laughs> uh, go and check that out. That's linked in the description below. And also, as per, promote the podcast, promote the podcast, promote the podcast. We do have a podcast called Nostalgia Bait and would absolutely love... Um, if you guys come and check that out again there is a link pinned in chat there is a link in the description below you can go and check it out you can drop us a follow might mean nothing to you and take five seconds but it means a hell of a lot to us we're trying to grow this we're trying to get it bigger and better and there will be a doctor who episode very very soon to keep an eye on so 
get your eyes peeled looking out for that uh, in the future. But in the meantime, there are seven episodes there with new episodes every single Thursday. We've got a Westworld one, a Five Nights at Freddy's one, a Spider-Man one, Oscar films, Newcastle United, well, not Newcastle United, but Newcastle just generally, um, Star Wars introduction episode, all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's all the stuff that I post currently. That's my content output. Um, if you are new to this channel or you haven't tuned in to this channel in a while, that's what I'm doing at the minute. I've got new podcast episodes every single Thursday, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, and even YouTube as well, the podcast arrives on. So please do listen to Nostalgia Bit. And every Tuesday we do live streaming as well here on YouTube and on Twitch. We have a lot going on. We don't make as much like YouTube content anymore, maybe not, but... um. There will be stuff coming soon as well. I've got a few videos lined up for this channel that are Doctor Who related that I'm sure you guys will love. So there's definitely a lot to subscribe for currently. Um, so if you're not already subscribed or you haven't been active with this channel in a while, I'd really, really love it if you jump on, start following. We've got some exciting stuff in the pipeline and I'd love for you guys to see it. Um, the story that you're about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. I don't know what that was about. Anyway, welcome, Steam Rooks. Never comment on Twitch, but I lurk and watch it and love it. Thank you, Jeremy Duncan. <laughs> but yeah. Ah, the Discord, there's a few of you, I think, have joined, haven't you? There we go. I'll give you all membership access. There we are. Lovely stuff. I'll do all that now. Thank you to everyone who's joining. And we'll keep your notifications on, and you can get notified whenever we start streaming or post a new podcast episode or anything like that. Um, but yeah, welcome to the little mini community we've got going on. It's not the most active thing in the world, but it's a lot of fun. Nine minutes to go. Eight minutes to go. So, I reckon we'll maybe stick to the Twitter version of the uh, trailer, because I feel like the YouTube one sometimes takes a couple minutes to get uploaded. Um, have you seen Sunshine 2007? Because a few things this era have reminded me of it strangely. I've not seen that, but I'll, uh, I'll have a look at it after this stream. I love a trailer, but I hope they don't reveal too much. Yeah, me too. Me too. Welcome, Matty, to the stream. Hope you're having a nice day. Hope you're very excited about the trailer. That's going to drop in less than 10 minutes. I'm honestly shocked I've spent this much of my day looking over episode titles. Hey, me too. <laughs> uh, will the trailer be broadcasting on BBC One? The, the trailer will broadcast on BBC One later this evening, but the trailer will be going live here um, in less than 10 minutes at 6 o'clock on the social media platforms, YouTube, Twitter. Thank you to Mike Park 123 for following me over on Twitch. Much appreciated, my friend. Um... But yeah, yeah, check TV Zone, show us more Ruby, what's TV Zone posting? Yeah, we've already talked about the the, uh, the casting news, um, way ahead of you on that front, it's, uh, I believe it's all new stuff unless there's something, yep, we've talked about that one, we've talked about that one, the BBC have already dropped that when we, uh, when it, yeah, about 20 minutes ago, same as them. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. To the new trailer when it drops. Come and join the party and react with us. Yeah, I want to just kind of promote it, get people involved. I love, I love. Um, what's the what's the what's the best sort of thing we can do? Yeah, that one. That'll do. Um, I love the idea of community, I love the idea of simultaneous viewing, and I love the fact there's 120 people who are tuning in to see my live reaction of this trailer, and I like to think that it's not just you watching me, but actually we're all sort of in this, and we're all reacting to this and all getting excited about this at the same time. We're all going to be sat here, and we're all going to be watching the trailer as it goes live, and isn't that such an exciting experience? You know, that we're all sat here waiting, refreshing our pages, um... I haven't visited your channel in a long time. I remember watching your series 11 reviews after the episodes would drop. I appreciate you tuning back in after so long. I really appreciate that. That really means a lot. Um, as, as I've mentioned previously, we do Doctor Who streams every single Tuesday evening. The Who Bulletin, we talk about the latest Doctor Who news and all that sort of stuff. And we do that here every Tuesday from 7 till 8 o'clock-ish. Um, 
as well as a bunch of other stuff. And we've got some more Doctor Who content coming soon. So if you fancy it, drop a subscription, get your notifications on, all that sort of lovely stuff. And there'll be a lot more content where that came from. 120 of you watching now, which I have to say is absolutely incredible. And I'm thoroughly, thoroughly thankful for um, how much you guys are, are tuning in for today's live stream. It's been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed myself. I am knackered, but I am very excited about having this little live watch party a live reaction party we've reacted to a lot of stuff live today and it's been really cool um yeah i love it i love it to bits five minutes to go guys five minutes to go not even four minutes Ugh. thanks matty appreciate that series 11 trailer reaction takes me back to how how that was six years ago oh god should we have a look at that I might have removed it. Maybe I have. Oh no. I love look how low res it is as well. <laughs> I was so happy. I mean, look how happy I was. Ah. Oh. Oh, I was so happy. I was so happy back then. Look at that. It's, good. it's beautiful. It, it looks great. I mean, it does look great. Ah, oh. Love it. Yeah, I was very happy about that. I wonder if we'll get a similar reaction today. Probably not. I feel like I'm not as uh, optimistic and like, ah, as I used to be, but I'm very excited. Um, I'm nervous. Two trailers in one week. I feel I know enough, but of course can't resist the trailer. I think it's, yeah, it's one of those things where, because it's split between Disney and BBC, obviously, this will be the BBC trailer. The Disney Plus trailer came out last week and it was excellent. The trailer for this, this week, probably won't be as high budget or as well made as, as the other one from last week. But um, I am still very, very excited about it and I'm still keen to give it a shot hoping it will show the right things not give away too much i'll be you know the thing i love as well is that we haven't actually got that many returning characters or monsters or characters yes but monsters no and i quite like that we've got a lot of new original ones maybe in the thing we'll we'll look at it and we'll get like we'll get a um i don't know some sort of um live i don't know what am i trying to say maybe we'll get some sort of dalek reveal in this trailer which is yeah you look surprisingly younger nowadays. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I'll take that, because people think I usually look fucking a lot older. Yeah, I think it's my glasses back then didn't really help me. I've turned it off, haven't I? But my, my glasses then didn't really help me. And I'm like, I've still got glasses now, but they're, they're sort of different glasses. They're sort of like very like slim glasses I had back then. Maybe look a bit like a sort of nerd. Um, you look like the guy filming with Ruby in Series 15, not going to lie. Well, I will take that I look like an actor. That's, uh, yeah. So I'm usually told I've got a face for radio, so I will absolutely take that. Thank you very much. I feel like I'm being gassed up here. It's lovely. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Fun. Here we go, BBC One. I wouldn't load up BBC One. I don't know if it's going to be on BBC One straight away. I have a feeling it's probably going to be... Yeah. What do you see, map? Yeah. Let's keep an eye on the Doctor Who social media account and I guess go from there. I would like to pre I prefer to see it on the actual YouTube page, but knowing knowing what YouTube is like, it's not always the most accurate in terms of that. So we'll refresh YouTube first and then we'll go straight to there. We're going to just watch the trailer as is. Um, we might get copyrighted, but that's going to be, yeah. We'll hopefully not get copyrighted on this, but we'll have to wait and see. Let's have a look in just a moment. 25, 26. Ah, 30 seconds till a new trailer. <laughs> ah, very, very exciting. We're going to have a live viewing party. Get it, get your pages loaded up. Get it watched. I mean, you're, I'm going to be 20 seconds behind you guys just because of the whole YouTube delay. So you're probably seeing it by now. You probably are seeing it by now. Ah, I'm very excited. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
one on the hour. Right, let's refresh here. Nothing on the actual channel yet. It's typical YouTube, but it probably will be on here, won't it? I'm actually nervous. Oh my god. Oh, yes, I am. It's a vertical trailer as well. Okay. 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 We are going to walk through time. Oh, this is so Richardson. This is Ruby. Oh. Wild, oh. Rude. No, you made it worse. Where shall we this is, go? Ah, oh, it's great. The Abbey Road thing. Great trailer. So much to break down, though, isn't there? This is what we're trying to stop. All of life extinguished. You keep us safe. I will keep us safe. Oh, that's a good trailer. That's a good trailer. There's a storm coming in. You called. Shatter this silly little battlefield into dust. Ooh, good dialogue. Into dust. Come on. <laughs> but I have freedom. Catching monsters, getting into scrapes. So I keep moving on. Oh. To see the next thing. This looks incredible. This actually looks incredible. Oh, the dancing and singing as well. New shooty outfit. And that's just the beginning. <laughs> so that's obviously specially filmed stuff, which I love that trailer. That was so good. <laughs> oh my god. That was such a good trailer. Oh, I'm so here for it. I'm so here for it. The season one trailer number two. Let's watch the full screen version. What did we think of that? That's a great trailer for the BBC. They've actually smashed it out of the park with both of those trailers. Um... I love the talk to the camera at the beginning, and I love the talk to the camera at the end. Obviously, that's not in the actual show, I don't think. But it's very cool to have that sort of talking to the camera kind of aesthetic. It's very different. He's excellent as the Doctor. I'm going to be watching this on repeat again. This is a great trailer. So let's break it down a little bit. Um, let's do it at like half speed, maybe. Um, so let's... So this is obviously the same shot from uh, the Unit HQ. We've seen that one. We've got um, Rose Noble, of course. We've seen that shot. This is a new one. So this is at Unit HQ. This is the same outfits from the finale. We saw Ruby in the snowstorm with that. And uh, Shitty's outfit here is excellent. Uh, some cool TARDIS button there. We've seen the Zero Gravity. That's a great shot for the TARDIS of the Vortex. Let's get the quality turned up a bit. Um, that's cool. What is that? I'm assuming that's from um, Dot, Dot and Bobble, maybe. <laughs> I love this little coat, yellow coat outfit. It's great. Um, and that's obviously where the TARDIS stops and like rots. So that's interesting. Maybe that's from 73 Yards. Abbey Road, Abbey Road, Abbey Road. And the TARDIS noise as well, echoing over. Spaceship, this looks got embryos in the tank here. Same outfit from episode one. So this is going to be from um, Space Babies. The way they look at each other is interesting. Again, not going to make any judgments oh, after. This is so <laughs> Ruby. Ruby Sunday. Good, good shots here, or from mostly from episode one. By the looks of it, it's from the Bridgerton episode, the um, Rogue. What is what is that's some sort of thing in the wall from the first episode? This Abbey Road thing looks that looks so good. I just realised I pulled my headphones out. That's so exciting. Oh my god, um, that's so cool. Oh, that's such a good shot as well. That's so good. Is that... 
Oh, see, I'm going to be nitpicky here. Is that the actual Abbey Road? It's not, is it? Because I know they filmed it in bloody Cardiff. But that, I've I've been it. I, I used to live around the corner from it. And it doesn't it doesn't really look like this? But we can we can we can we can look past that. It looks like the album cover, and that's what's important. What the fuck is that? Why wow, we got Coruscant in the background? What's that about? We got fucking Star Wars shit now. That looks fucking like Coruscant. Um, we got some sort of planet and then space station here. We've seen a lot of shots of the space station. Episode one, space babies. Oh, I don't know if about, I don't know about the babies talking. That's a bit weird. So they can talk. It's just like an interpreter machine here, sort of space baby nursery kind of thing. And then the same episode here. Isn't the universe mad? Ruby's hair is covered in something. There's stuff on the ceiling. I think that's going to be something, again, the whole bogeyman thing. That was a little theory I had. It's going to be made of actual bogeys or something. Something stupid like that. Random landings. That's obviously from the first. So I reckon, yeah, that, that takes place after the dinosaur thing. So they go and do dinosaur stuff. This is from... Yeah, look at the so that the slug episode is definitely bubble and dot or dot and bubble or whatever it's called because you've got the same sort of aesthetic with the panels and the stuff there. That's yep, yep. It's like a video game forward as well. That's very cool. That's from the Beatles episode, from the first episode. We've got the bogeyman again there. This is from Boom. The dialogue in this is great as well. So this is very cool. The sand shots again. We've had a lot of these shots. Now they keep her safe stuff. We've had that as well. Some sort of shocking stuff. This is obviously from Boom as well. He's crying. Interesting. Got to get some emotion in the Stephen Moffat episode by the looks of it. That's good. We've had that shot before. Jinx Monsoon's first actual line here. So saying you called, and she's sort of coming out of what looks like a piano here, like a grand piano. So I think it's going to be very similar to that of the um, the toy maker again, coming out of the toy box, going in back into the toy box. Similar sort of imagery of this sort of celestial kind of being um, that comes out of a piano, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, the dialogue here is really cool. Oh, <laughs> such a cool line. The emotion in his voice when he says that as well. Oh, the piano being a TARDIS is a shout line. That's another one. Again, standing in London. That's pretty cool. Great shot. Look at his wig. Look at his bloody wig in the Regency one. That's so good. It was like on the back of his neck. It's great. Ruby. Entering the TARDIS again. Again, that same that same cliff top that we saw earlier in the trailer. That see, see, notice a couple things here, right? So we always have this shot here associated, this one associated with the next one here, right? It's not the same episode. It's not the same scene even. So this cliff, this is their outfits from episode one. I think this is from when they see the dinosaurs. Um, whereas this is on a cliff top, which actually matches the beginning of the trailer when they. First land there. Do we have that somewhere? It's definitely somewhere. This that 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 one there. That one there that I missed. The shots of the TARDIS look incredible as well. There, it's this clipped up here, so it's a different outfit, not the same location. Don't be don't be uh, swayed by that. Um. Seen a few of these shots before. So yeah, that lines up with the dinosaur thing, which. Also notice as well how much better the the actual image quality looks on this one than the Disney Plus one. There was a conversion issue with the colour. This is what it's supposed to look like, and it looks great. Running through Abbey Road. We've seen that shot before. We've seen this shot before. A few shots from the original trailer from New Year's. Same there. Another shot there from, from that. That's from the finale. Looks like unit headquarters now. We're getting a bit more of a view of that. The snow coming down inside. Once again, snow being... Something of a, of a consistent theme there. Um, the music notes thing. We saw that from the Disney trailer. Excellent. The Vortex looks incredible. Oh! 
oh, I'm, I'm actually going to die. That's such a good... We're going to see a shot of the TARDIS coming out of the time vortex. Look, it's in the vortex and then comes out into space. No, no, not the spaceship, but that is like space in the background there. In the vortex, out the vortex. I love Disney Budget Duck 2. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. Oh, that looks so good. Another shot of that spaceship. That cliff top thing that we haven't quite seen yet. Don't know where that's come from. It's from the intro. Then we've got a sort of dance sequence that's in Abbey Road Studios there. A lot of people dancing, big musical number. So we're going to have the Doctor singing again by the looks of it. The Doctor letting the butterfly go that doesn't get crushed by Ruby. Ah, hey, yeah, look at that outfit as well. I think this outfit was leaked when they were filming. So I don't know what this is about, but it's a really cool looking outfit. Very interesting. You've seen that shot from the Disney trailer as well. Ah, oh, that is such a great fucking trailer. Ah, oh. oh my god. Well, that is, that is pretty much that. A lot of um, theories and all that sort of thing. Um, I will say, we will be back on YouTube uh, at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. And we'll be talking about this trailer. We'll be talking about pretty much anything that I might have missed, any theories that you guys have, have a few days to think on it, and we'll be back on Tuesday with another episode of The Who Bulletin live. 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock, don't miss it, subscribe, get your notifications on. If you want, join the Discord as well, so you don't miss out on the notifications. Um, I'll send the invitation once again so you guys can see it. If you want to join our Discord server to be up to date on all the latest content that I'm putting out there, live streams, podcast episodes, etc., join the Discord, jump in, and you'll get notified whenever anything goes live. We're going to be talking about this on Tuesday. Um, I'm super, super, super excited about that. Let me know what you think about the trailer now, and we'll have a read of it just before we finish up. But I'm just going to take this opportunity to sort of tell you about all the other stuff I've got going on one last time before we wrap up, because this has been a four-hour live stream. <laughs> um... Thank you all so much for watching. But um, yeah, we do live stream every single Tuesday with Doctor Who news. Um, just like this, reacting to live stuff, talking about stuff, breaking down stuff. And we'll be back, as I say, on Tuesday to talk about that once again. Um, and after the Who Bulletin on Tuesday, we also have a Twitch channel where we do... Um, where we basically... What am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? Where we have a Twitch channel where we go on and we play video games every Tuesday after the Who Bulletin. We go from the Who Bulletin, talk about Doctor Who, go over to Twitch, play some video games. And that's over there as well, linked in the chat. And finally, the final thing is we have a new uh, a podcast with new episodes every single Thursday. It's called Nostalgia Bait. I would absolutely, absolutely love if you guys could check this out. We're going to have some exciting Doctor Who episodes coming soon to coincide with the beginning of the new series. So you can look out for that. Check out this podcast. It is linked in the chat, but I will link it one more time so you guys can check it out if you don't have a spotify it's also available on amazon prime podcasts um apple podcasts google podcasts spotify and even here on youtube so anywhere you can watch it please do check it out give us a follow that, that absolutely massively 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 helps and supports us if you drop a follow um and if you have fancy it give us a good rating as well we've got seven episodes there already and new ones every single thursday so please please do check that out um yeah, that's everything we're up to, everything, all the content that I'm putting out there. Please do go and check that out. In the meantime, though, let's read out what you guys have to say about this trailer, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, so let's have a look. A lot of people saying they're, like, shook to shit, like, they're really excited about that. A really good trailer. The use of colour. It felt like the guy in Torch would have drift. Um, the mock-up of a million... The, um, <laughs> Let's see, Devils. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I'm super excited about this. I think that trailer was absolutely worth waiting for. It's been a very long live stream talking about the trailers and titles and stuff. As a summary, I think the titles are great. There's a few sort of weird ones in there that I don't really understand. But again, we've got another trailer for this series, which looks fucking incredible. Like, I'm so excited for it. I think that it's going to be hopefully one of the best series we've had in a long time there seems to be a lot of love going into it and a lot of budget going into it to make it look and feel like one of the best seasons we've had in a long time so i could not be more excited for may to come around i could not be more excited uh, to be making more doctor who content for you all at the minute um super super excited about that so thank you all so much for tuning in for this long for our live stream as i said we'll be back on tuesday every tuesday with brand new episodes installments of the uh, live streams the who bulletin talking about the latest doctor who news breaking it down and then more importantly answering your guys questions um yeah that's pretty much i think everything i want to say or add 
Um, if you haven't already, the link to the Discord is in the chat, but I'll put it in once again if you want to get notified on whenever we go live um, here on YouTube. Yeah, I'll put that in there again at some point. Let's have a look at that. But um, yeah, come and join the Discord if you haven't already. It's a good way to get notifications for everything. What the fuck? Hang on. Um, but yeah, it's been an absolutely wonderful live stream. I've really, really enjoyed it, and I'm super, super excited to be here making content. I was so glad I was free today to be able to do that. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and I thank you all so, so much for joining in. Um, and yeah, obviously my social media is all linked in the description below. So if you want to see what I'm up to, um, I tweet quite a lot about Doctor Who over on Twitter. So feel free to follow me on there. Um, also Instagram. And again, our podcast, live streams, we're making content for you every single week. Um, I don't stop. So please do check it out. We really, really appreciate it. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in to this wonderful little live stream. Little. <laughs> it certainly isn't little. Um, and yeah, hopefully see you all on Tuesday with the next installment of The Who Bulletin at 7 o'clock. See you all there. Have a lovely evening. Happy Easter, everyone. I'll see you all later. <laughs>